All right, so the one, first and foremost, we give all praise to Yahweh, Bashem, Yahushua, Bashem, Rakhar Kodash. The ones that the the great millstone that rule well. And shall the to all you brothers on the highways and byways. Through the works of Sealy and faithfully continue fighting that good fight of faith. Lord willing, we are finding that number to be delivered. Again, once again, we're going to come out and prophesy the scriptures, prophecies, testimony, articles, everything we can give you, we're going to give you. Lord willing, it's edifying. Lord willing, you know, Moves, it soothes the spirit that you know that Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai is on their way back, man. And that's why we come out to, to be, be extensions of the comforter to you, to let you hear these words that you may be comforted in these last days, all right? What you got? I got an article for you, Elder. Go ahead. Now, this is from falsenews.com, and he says, House passes defense bill automatically registering men from 18 to 26 years old for draft. And he says the House of Representatives passes a measure on Friday automatically registering men aged from 18 to 26 for selective services. It was part of the annual National Defense Authorization Act. We set out the U.S. government military and national security priority over the next fiscal year. So now, with, with, with the situation that's happening right now, you know how all the nations are game, game, game for war, and how Russia just right on the east coast of, of, of Miami just have their ship just running right through, you know, go to Cuba, yep, yep. showing their strength and intimidating the United States of America. Now they're making preparation for a possible of a third world nuclear war, which they know there's going to be a third world nuclear war, you know. And, and, and then on top of that, the, the age is 18 to 26. Now you got this new Gen Z, you know, a lot of young men. Gen Z. You know, we call them Generation Z. You know, the you know, yeah, you, know you know, they they're now out there making a response video to, to, to what what just happened to, to the house bill that was, that just that just that passed. But you know, they have been living all their life in peaceful in their comfort zone, and now war's about to pop off. You know, now they now they saying that they may have to go to the very front line. To go to war and die, and now a lot of them said that no, I'm not going. A lot of them said that I'm make me right. So, I, but go ahead, brother. Let me say this real quick too. Yeah. So when 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 9/11 hit, you know it was an open door. There was people flocking to these recruitment centers because they was fighting for the cause that they believed that their country was under attack. All right. So now it only makes sense that this time around, people become hip to the to the to the inner workings of this system, man. Especially with this military. People become hip, so now they're gonna have to force you to go join that military. Yep. They're gonna have to put the stronghold on you. They're gonna put damn near, you know, uh, we used to we used to speak about the North American Union, where Canada, America, and Mexico were all in the same on the same page, and so and so to sorts, if you if, so to speak. Meaning if, 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 yep. meaning, if somebody decided that they were gonna try to flee to, to avoid the draft, yep. they would all automatically round right. it up. All right, but it's gonna happen, man. Say so. What you got? I got uh, Revelations 11 and 14. Yep. Uh, yep. The second woe is past, yep. and behold, the third woe coming quickly. Right, and that we on the precipice of that third woe. As a matter of fact, the third woe has already started. It's some of what we can call a cold war, but it's about to get hot. Give me um, 2 Ezra 16 and 33. This is, a, this is a cold war that's now starting to become hot. Vladimir Putin is making big statements right now, all right? And these statements that he's making got these devils over here trembling because they understand and they know that the military might that that Russia represents is going to be something to combat with, man. All right, hold on one second. Go ahead, brother. Huh? This is uh, 2nd Ezra 16 and 33, yep. and it reads, And the virgin shall mourn, having no bridegrooms, yep. and the woman <laughs> shall mourn, having no husband, yep. and their daughter shall mourn, having no helpers. Yep. In the war shall their bridegrooms be destroyed, yep. and their husbands shall perish of famine. So they're gonna they're gonna send these cats over there, man. It's gonna be a draft. You're gonna get sent over yeah, that to these it. other lands, yeah. and you're gonna be put to, to the task of fighting for this country that you so-called hate. You're gonna be put to the task, man. Especially you Jakes out there. You Jakes gonna be the first ones rounded up because you're expendable. You're you're useless in this place, man. And Esau knows that, and that's how they perceive you. So who not who not to grab first for an open draft, man? Jake. Yeah, the, 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 the draft, draft, draft is. Uh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Well, the draft is very telling, right? Because you know, you know, you 
you made you gave the example of 9-11 and how people were uh, adamant about the defense of their country. Mm -hmm. Whereas now it's, it's, it's not the same, right? So I was thinking to myself as we were speaking out there, I said, you know, well, that's, that's because now it's, there's an all-out expose on, on just just wickedness in general, mm -hmm. but in particular the, the wickedness that America has, you know, perpetuated in the earth. Like, and now people are hip to the, the goings on. So the the the, the adamancy of, of defending your country is, is dwindling. You know, because it's like, why would I fight for a place? Like, they probably went over there starting some trouble. That's the that's the that's the mindset. Yeah. Right. So now you know, when, uh, Isaiah forty seven comes to mind. Yep. It talks about how we're going to expose this place. Yep. Of course, oh. uh, the, the elders getting ready to read uh, Second Ezra 16, uh, Joel the third chapter. There, uh, there's a scripture where it talks about, um, uh, I think it's in Isaiah where it said, This battle shall be fought with confused noise. Was that Isaiah 9? Yeah, it's Isaiah 9 and 5. Yeah, yeah. So it's all, it's all, it's all of these things. We're, we're in the, the, the uh, say, atmosphere of. These things that we talk about come in the past, right? This this draft, we always said there was going to be a draft, and we used to point at the recruitment center. Ain't hey, nobody going in there, but we, we only come out on Sunday, so we don't know what it looks like during the hey, week. Hey, but, hey, I, know, but, I, I, but I know what it looks like because on, on Saturday I still not come out with it. It's yeah, still yeah, it's still dead. Yeah, don't, don't tell nobody oh, your business, bro. Oh, no. <laughs> but but <laughs> the point the point being is that the the. The, the, the lack of, let me say it this way, patriotism has, has dwindled. Yep. The, the pa patriotism is not the same as it used to be. You got people that care more about their, their favorite sports team than they do about their country. Right? Oh, yeah. This is uh, Jeremiah 51 and 30. Mm -hmm. It says, the mighty men of Babylon have forborn to fight. Yeah, yeah. They have remained in their holes. Hold on, hold on. Yeah. That brother me in the spirit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Read that again, brother. This is Jeremiah. Said, Jeremiah 51 and 30. Come on. This is Jeremiah 51 and 30. Yep. It says the mighty men of Babylon have been forborn, have forborn to fight. For, forborn meaning they refuse, right? And so when you look at this video that this brother just showed, <laughs> yeah. he said, I'll break both my legs. He said, I'll get in the car accident on purpose <laughs> to make sure I don't have to right. go to the court. But it, but it also brings, the, brings to mind that yeah. video that was floating around when these U.S. soldiers was in a building and them bombs are going off around them. <laughs> They up under, under the table, dude, you're pushing me. You know, they trying to hide while, yeah, yeah. while mortars and bombs are exploding all around. And this is the, and this is going to be the sentiment of that of that mindset when that time comes, man. They ain't going to want to fight. Because when they understand the magnitude of what's going on, because America, what they try to do, they try to push out this big machoism mentality where America's the biggest, the baddest, the strongest. Then when they get over there, they realize they're fighting savages over there, man. You know, people who are lawless. They were born to fight. That's it. That's it. That's it. Their, their nature. Going back to their nature. Genesis. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Grab that, brother. And the thing about that, this, this, there's some veteran soldiers who often ask themselves the question. How they not? How they don't fear death? They just run out in the middle, middle of nowhere, took themselves out along with everybody else. But it, it's a, it's an honor to die though. Yeah. In their in their in their country. Yeah. It's an honor for these people to die for the cause. You know what? What happens? What's the first thing they say when they they, they press that button? Oh, fuck. Boom! <laughs> so it's an honor for them, man. Oh, right? So the Americans, they get, the Americans get over there, dude, dude. You see that? Whoa, wow! These guys are crazy. They ain't got no forums with blowing you and themselves up to, to send the cars. Yeah. Patriotism. Over mm -hmm. here, you just fight because you have to. Yep. But over there, yep. they're real patriots. They're really fighting for their way of life. Yep. And their culture and, yep. and the way they do things. Yep. But really, America is, is the bully, man. The scriptures say that, yeah, how was that? Uh, yeah, the hammer. 50 yep. and 20. Yep. Yep. 23. The yeah. whole earth. This is uh, Genesis 16, I start at 11, and it says, And the angel of the Lord said unto her, Behold, thou art with child, and shalt bear a son, and shall call his name Ishmael, because the Lord had heard thy affliction, yep. and he will be a wild man, and his hands will be against every man, and every man's hand against him. And, and hold it right there, mm -hmm. and look whose hands against them. Every man in the land, every man in the world is against him. The Arabs, they, they, they're the terrorists, all these things. He would be a wild man. They they fought with Russia years back, man. Yeah. They put the ass whooping on Russia. So therefore, they are they are strong people, man. They were also made twelve princes, right? So they was even given some type of status. 
Go ahead. Uh-huh. And he shall dwell in the presence of all his brethren. That's it. All right, go ahead, brother. Uh, uh, let me let this brother finish off. Okay, this is uh, Jeremiah 51 and 30. The mighty men of Babylon have forborn to fight. They have remained in their halls. Their might have failed. Mm -hmm. They become as women. That's right. That's right. They become as women because America throughout the years growing up back in the back in the early 70s coming up through the you know mid 70s and so on up until present america had always had that theme the bravest the baddest the strongest the scripture the through the prop now the scripture says how thou also become as weak as we because now the plane feels level with that nuclear capability go ahead brother no, 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 see, back you up uh scripture say that the heavenly father have mingled a perverse spirit yep you got transmissions inside the military so like these other nations they're not going to take uh, the uh, U.S. military as right. a, much as a threat, right, right, you know what I'm right. saying? Yeah, that's, yeah. that's a great way to put it, transmissions, right. you know? <laughs> and, 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 and these other countries can't even fathom how this even how this even works. How is this allowed? Right. How is this even put in place? Right. And you're going to send you gonna send that over here to fight against yeah. us? Shit. <laughs> Shit. They're going to they smack, smack them around to the west side here. Well, go ahead. It says, they have, they have burned her dwelling place, her yep. bars are broken. Yep. One post shall run to meet another, and one messenger to meet another, to show the king of Babylon that his city is taken at one end. See that? And that's, and that's ultimately the goal, is to take America. America is going to be destroyed with thermonuclear destruction. So any spirit and any person in this country, when that Third World War heats up to a hot war, which is right around the corner, we here. This is it. Them thermonuclear missiles are going to launch over here, and they're going to destroy this place, man. And every soul that's going to be in this bad boy outside of the men of the Lord and those whom the Lord have mercy on is going to be destroyed and die over here. Go ahead. I got an article from endtimeheadlines.org, and the heading reads, Russia deploying air and sea assets for military exercises in Caribbean, according right. to U.S. officials. Right. Now, Russia is, a, is going to be the key, key component to all this, that North country. They've got missiles and, and rockets off the coast of Venezuela. They're, 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 they're joining hand in hand with the Iranians, with Ahmadinejad and, and, and uh, Kim Jong-un. They're all coming together. America's finished. That's why when you read in the book of Obadiah, matter of fact, give me Obadiah. Obadiah started six. Okay, continue on. Another article ahead, brother. similar, again from endtimeheadlines.org, Russia TV claims that Moscow could deploy ICBM missiles in Mexico. And, and, and that's another thing. They are also uh, Russia is now joining hands in hand with Mexico. Here you have some Mexico and so-called South American countries joining forces with Russia. Why is that? America's finished, man. America's finished. I just read what's a lot. Yeah, go ahead. Read on. Read on, uh, brother. Kremlin propagandists have claimed that countries in Latin America including Mexico, yep. could host missiles that can strike American targets. Now, listen, that's in the U.S. backyard. That, right, listen, wow. that's going to be no problem. That's going to be no problem for those missiles to reach over here. I don't want to mention, it's only going to take less than a half hour for a missile to leave Russia to hit America, man. Yeah. And once it hit America, in one hour, America's going to be destroyed, man. Right. One hour. Go ahead. This is uh, Jeremiah 50 and 14. Yep. It says, uh, put yourselves in array in against Babylon round about, all ye that bend the bow. And that's why these smaller nations said, thou become as weak as we, yep. because they have nuclear capabilities now. Years, 20 years ago, 25, 30 years ago, these other nations were afraid of America, because America was ruling with an iron fist. They had, there was room with dra draconian rule, smashing these small nations that even dared to speak bad about America. But now they don't give a damn. They over there burning the American flags. Yep. They burned the American flags. Can you imagine that 25, 30 years ago? They burned some flags. Esau would send some jets over there and drop all kinds of bombs. But they can't do that now because everybody possesses the ability to shoot rockets and drop bombs. Okay. Go ahead, Elder. Yeah, it says, put yourselves in array against Babylon round about. All ye that bend the bow, shoot at her, spare no arrows, for she have sinned against the Lord. Right, and at the end of the day, it's all going to come down to what? For what the people have done to the Lord's people on this side. The Lord's coming back to destroy these nations, man. All right? It says, shout against her round about. She hath given her hand. Her foundations are fallen. Her walls are thrown down. For it is the vengeance of the Lord. Take vengeance upon her, as she hath done, do unto her. Cut off the sower from Babylon. Right, that her is America. Mm -hmm. 
America's that hurt. Stand beside her and guide her. That's this is the hurt. America, these are the things, these are the place where the sins have reached up to the heavens. Go ahead. Cut off the sower from Babylon, mm -hmm. and him that handleth the sickle in the time of harvest. Right. For fear of the oppressing sword, they shall turn every one to his people, and they shall flee every one to his own land. Right, going back to what? You're going you're gonna you're gonna pick a side and you're gonna go back to who you know and who you're familiar with. We, we, yeah, we like to use somewhat the, the, the scenarios of somebody being in prison or locked up. When a man goes into prison, if he's a white man, Puerto Rican man, black, he's going to go back to who he's familiar with, who he can relate to. Likewise, these northern nations, they're not going to stay in America. They can call themselves American all they want, but this is just a title. They're going to go back to who they feel protected by. If you have a place, That's right. I, I got it. This is an article. Yeah, go ahead. This is uh, Joel. Right now. I know. Yeah. Yep. This is uh, Joel 3 and 9. It says, Proclaim ye this among the Gentiles. Prepare war. Wake up the mighty men. Let all the men of war draw near. Let them come up. Beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears. Right. Let the weak say, I am strong. Right. And, there, and there, those weapons now are being turned from farming instruments, so to say, into weapons of war. Let the weak say, I am strong. You had your turkeys, you had your, your, your Irans, you had all these small countries now, now popping up saying, let the weak say, I am strong. Because now, not only that, but America, I mean, Russia has become a big brother to these small countries, you know? And, and, and again, the analogy, got your little brother going to the to the high school now yeah, 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 and them little high schools are they're beating up on him what's he gonna do go get his big brother that's why all these nations aren't fearful of America anymore right, right. because Russia has now became an asset with them to help them to aid them in the event that another country such as America tries to enforce their will upon them man go ahead verse 11 it says assemble yourselves and come all ye heathen and gather yourselves together round about, thither cause thy mighty ones to come down, O Lord. Let the heathen be weakened and come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat, mm -hmm. for there will I sit to judge all the heathen round about. Put ye in the sickle, for the harvest is ripe. Come, get you down for the press is full. The fats overflow, for their wickedness is great. The time is coming, man. And all these nations are getting together. Let me get with this brother right here. Mm -hmm. yep. come, come. Oh, this is, I'll start at Ezekiel 38, and um, I'll start at 3. Yep. And it says, And thus said the Lord of power, Behold, I am against thee, O Gog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal. Right, when you go to the ancient maps, Gog and Magog is the Russian region. That's what Russia is known as today. I mean, Gog and Magog is known as Russia today. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. It says, I will put thee back and put a hooks in thy jaws. Right, he will draw thee back because 2008, 2007, yep. Yep. you had people talking about Russia will never be a superpower again. And here we are. And I, I example myself uh, exclusively. I had a, a conversation with my boss. I was like, yeah, it's back in 2007. He said, yeah, Russia's about to make that move. He looked at me like, yeah, real crazy, you know, yeah, Russia? Yeah, yeah, right. Sure as shit. As, as this thing started to unfold, hey, hey, you were right about that. Let me tell you something, man. It's all through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashmi Al Shai. I wasn't right, but the spirit of the prophecies are coming to pass. We make them, we speaking about them. Go ahead. Uh-huh. It says, I will put thee back and put hooks in thy jaws. That's talking about Russia. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. And I will bring thee forth and all thy and all thy armies and horses and horsemen, and all of them clothed with all sorts of armor, even a great company with bucklers and shield, right. and all of them handling swords. Right. So now the Lord's talking about a future prophecy. Now we're living this out right now. What was written over 2,000 years ago is now being played out as we speak. Russia's now being that superpower that's now flexing its muscle. And not only is it flexing its muscle, it's going around with all its allies and saying, listen, come with us, stand with us, join with us. You know, these BRICS nations are going to show and prove you that, to show you that when they drop the dollar bill here in America. When they stop using the American dollar as the world's reserve currency, it's Saudi, over, man. Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia just came in. Yeah. It's Saudi over. Arabia. So people here in America don't realize their dollar bill is about to be out of here. And then when that happens, what they're going to do? What they're going to put into place? 
M O T B, Mark of the Beast. That's what's that's what's gonna be your next mean of buying stuff. You gotta have to have that chip. All right, so where we at? You good on that? Um, a couple more. Go ahead. Oh, uh, verse four. Watch your back, y'all. Uh, actually, verse five. Then it reads, Persian, the Persia, Ethiopia, yep. and Libya with yep. them, and all of them with shields and helmets. Yep. And Gomer and all his bands, mm -hmm. and the house of Togomar mm -hmm. uh, of the north quarters, and yep. all his bands, and many people with thee. Yep. Be thou prepared and prepare for thyself, That's right. and thou and all thy company yep. that are assembled unto thee, yep. and be and be thou a guard unto them. Yep. That's right. So Russia's going to be a guard unto all these other nations, and these nations he just mentioned are actual living nations as we speak, man. This ain't no, this ain't no ancient history where these nations are long gone. This is here. We here in the present, man. Right, right. Go ahead, read that article. Now, now, this is an article from the economy, economy make times .com. and the headline read: Why is there a washer nuclear submarine just 200 miles on the coast of Florida? Right now, there's Russian, there's Russian submarines off the coast of Florida. There's Russian submarines out by Venezuela. That's why I said. Um, uh, um, surround her, you know. All you that bend the boat, shoot at her. Okay, surround, uh, surround her around the boat. Set yourselves in a ray around the boat. Set yourselves in a ray around the boat, and that's what's actually taking place. So, as the brother read earlier, the third world cometh quickly. That wall represents world war, world war. So, therefore, the third world, third world cometh quickly. Go ahead. You got, you got a quick precept. Quick, yeah. Hot off the press. Go ahead, brother. Ecclesiastes, the third chapter, the first verse, and I'm gonna jump down to the uh, huh. eighth. Uh, Ecclesiastes 3 and 1, to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under heaven. And here, I'm going to jump straight to the point. Verse 8, a time to love and a time to hate. Yep. A time of war and a time of peace. Right, and we're in the time of war right now. This is the time that we're living in. These, these, nations, these nations are appearing up for war. So when you, when you go to Ecclesiastes, the third chapter, and I think it was the birds that made a song. Uh, yeah, was it the birds? Yeah, the time, birds. Yep, they made a song. Based off of the scripture, yeah. The whole scripture is their whole song is based off of that scripture, yeah. and again, it's about balance because the Lord said, uh, uh, "Give me that." Is it Proverbs eleven Proverbs and one? 11 and 1. Give me Proverbs eleven and one, real quick. Go ahead. Proverbs eleven and one. A false balance is an abomination to the Lord, right? But a just weight is His delight. Right, because everybody likes to talk about how, how how much the Lord loves, the Lord loves, the Lord loves. But if a false balance is an abomination right. to the Lord, that means He has to hate. You see? So the Lord is a man of war. The Lord does hate people. Go ahead. That's it. Uh, Exodus 15 and 3. The Lord is a man of war. Yahweh is his name. So when you go to war and you're, they, they strap you up with boots and grenades and rifles and guns, are you going to war as a happy man? No. You're going to war to kill somebody. You're going to war because you have now given a, an assignment that it's either going to be you or them. One or the other. Right. So this is the time we're in, a time for peace and a time for war. And a time for peace is long gone. We're in a time of war right now. And this is what the prophecy should be about. You should be prophesying about the times that we're living in right now. Ain't nobody happy out here, man. Ain't nobody joyful around here. People are living paycheck to paycheck. People don't know if they're going to put food on the table. And what's going to happen when you can't do that? You're going to go out and make it happen for your family. That's right. Whether you got to take somebody's life right. or whether you got to take somebody's food or their assets. This is the time that we're coming into right now. Yeah, can I just finish this article real quick, uh, Elder? Now, this is um, continuing from the article, right? And he says, the, the washers, the washers are, are coming. The washers are coming. The Russians. Go ahead. He said, The Washington Coming, The Washington Coming is a movie that was released in the 1960s, exactly. which showcased the thriving Cold War between the two superpowers, mm -hmm. the U.S. and the U.S.S.S.R. Mm -hmm. the, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 The, the situation yep. is somewhat similar in 2024 in the real world. Yep. Four Washington ships, including a Washington submarine, have reached Cuba on Wednesday. Located just two two hundred miles of the coast of Florida, does this pose a threat to the security of the U.S. And why are these joint novel exercises that are being conducted? You know, America loves to go. America loves to go around to these small nations and strong arm. And I'm thinking of Iran in particular. They want to put sanctions on Iran. Iran is not supposed to have nuclear capabilities or or uranium. They're not supposed, but but. Russia has these things. You ain't, they ain't said a goddamn thing about Russia. Yep. Because America's a bully. All right? So these countries that are now getting support from Russia, 
they're stepping up. They're taking their, they, you know, Superman came in like this. That's how these days, they're taking their shirt off. What you gonna do? You know? And, Go ahead, brother. And, and, and real quick, other, and also too, on the news, when, when, when the ship was, was coming close to Cuba, you know, Cuba found a cannon as a welcoming for the Washington to come in. Yeah. And, and, uh, and, uh, and the news media, the people started to get a little nervous. Mm -hmm. They started wondering what, 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 what's going on. Mm -hmm. And that just washed up, intimidating America, mm -hmm. showing them that, listen, I got the power to get close to your border, and there's nothing you can do about it. It's like, they, it's like they're betting America yeah. to do something. Yeah, yeah. You know? Yep, yep. I got a quick article. All right, it's just article. Gonna be the I'm going to go to the article, and we're going to come right down the line. Yeah. Right here. All right, this is from political.eu, and the heading reads Russia warns U.S. of fatal consequences over miscalculations in Ukraine. So before you start that, right? America and the American citizens are the only ones who are in total darkness, man. Yep. These other nations, they see what's happening. Now, is it because the, 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 the news system is tainted and it, and it covers up all the real deal information that you need to know? Of course it is. They're not going to tell you that Russia's on the, on the outskirts of America. They're not going to tell you that these other nations now have missiles pointed over at America. They're not going to tell you these things. So therefore, it would behoove you to hear the prophets of the Lord and take heed to these things because it's going to be too late once this thing got, starts breaking down. You got a quick precept? Yeah, go ahead. You said that. Uh, this is Jeremiah 28 and 8. Yep. It says that the prophets that had been before me and before thee of old prophesied both against many countries, against great kingdoms of war, evil, and of pestilence. Right. The, the prophets that have been before us have done the same thing in the ancient times prophesied against war, evil, and pestilence. Now, this is the time we're doing it. Speaking of pestilence, they're talking about the bird, the N5H1? Uh, N yeah. H1, H5N1, something like that? H1. Right, you, you watch. That's gonna that's gonna start taking heat. It's gonna start gaining speed. And, and it's, yep, yep, it's gonna start gaining speed. So, as we speak about the pestilence, now we gotta be careful because, you know, we'll get hit with misinformation or mismedical information your, 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 your channel gets a strike in the whole whole nine but we'll throw out hints out there so you can know you think that whole thing with with, with the last thing that just took place that locked you up for uh, what three years you think that was some wait till the shit that's going down the next time around go ahead another article that we, you know we've been pushing russia but these other nations yeah. are all in unison that's it again from endtimeheadlines.org North Korea issues a new nuclear warning yep. to the West Woo. and South Korea. You see that? North Korea. Now every, everything's coming to pass, man. All the prophecies and all the nations are coming to pass. So therefore, it's only a matter of time before you people start feeling the effects of these things. Because there's nothing of a... Give me that uh, uh, Isaiah 34, 37. Uh, um, I'm sitting the ground, there is no problem. Isaiah 47. 47. I got it. I got it. Yeah, yeah. Give me that. Give me that. Isaiah chapter 47. Yeah, brother. Hey, brother. Yeah. That's the old Michael Oliver, boy. <laughs> <laughs> it's, 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 it's the, brother, the brother, the brother, the brother thinking of it. Michael Oliver already got it. Go ahead, brother. Go ahead. Isaiah 47 and 1, it says, Come down and sit in the dust, O virgin daughter of Babylon. This is America. America is that virgin daughter. America has never been touched militarily by any other country. So it's that virgin daughter of Babylon that has taken on the same characteristics of ancient Babylon. So it becomes a virgin daughter. Go ahead. Sit on the ground, there is no throne. Sit on the ground, there is no throne. Go ahead. O daughter of the Chaldean, for thou shalt no more be called tender and delicate. Thou shalt no more be called tender and delicate. Because men look at women as a tender and delicate you know, person. You just your girl, you know. You know you and that's how, and, but again, going back to Stand beside her and guide her. God, uh, the scripture says, shoot at her, spare no arrows. So she's not going to be called tender and delicate. Because when, you, because when you come into New York, the first thing you see is that Statue of Liberty. That brings joy to people's hearts because when they come here, they think they've made it. Oh gosh, we're here to America. We're going to live out our dreams. Only to come to find out, it becomes a nightmare when you get over here. Go ahead. It's uh, Revelation uh, 18. 18. Yep. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and has become the habitation of devils, right. and the hold of every foul spirit, and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. Right, and at this point, when it says Babylon is fallen, it's going to be destroyed by thermonuclear missiles, America. O virgin, o virgin daughter of Babylon, right? Mm -hmm. Now it's being told that that virgin daughter is now fallen. It's become the foul, uh, the cage of every foul spirit and, every, and the cage of every unclean bird. 
Meaning what? There's gonna be nothing left over here to a certain point of doleful creatures. Desert creatures are gonna be dwelling over here. America's gonna be finished. Go ahead. Verse 3, it says, For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. Yep. And the merchants of the earth are waxed rich yep. with the abundance of her delegates. Right, because America has outsourced all its resources, and all these other lands become rich off of this place. And this is why, as the brother elder reads down, this is why it's going to tell you that these merchants of the earth, they're going to, these kings of the earth, they're going to howl and mourn for her because this place is how they became rich. This is the place where they became very lucrative at the expense and at the bones and the backs of the, mainly these people on the sign over there. Go ahead, elder. Yeah, verse 4 it says, And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, right. that ye be not partakers of her sins. Right, come back to the heavenly father. Come back to the Lord. Know, know the Lord's name. Know who you are as a person. You're not just a, a, a so-called Negro, a so-called Puerto Rican. Those are all titles our people were given. But as you see on this sign, that's your true biblical nationality. So to behoove you to understand who you are as a people, that maybe the Lord have mercy on you before all these things take place. Because they're unfolding faster than you can believe. Go ahead. Yeah, it says, come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, right. and that ye receive not of her plagues. Right, and the ultimate plague is going to be them thermonuclear missiles yep, yep. that are going to destroy this yep, place. Yep. Right, you've already we've already been saturated with the will it with the with the living of how you know we, we're forced to go to work, we're forced to buy, we're forced to do all these things. Yep. So much so we look at these things in America as a joyful thing, yep. but it, it, it's been a curse unto us. All right, go ahead. Yep, verse five. For her sins have reached unto heaven, and the Most High hath remembered her iniquity. That's right. Reward her. Back, that's why I pulled this out. You right. stand beside her and guide, guide her. her. Right. Reward her, even as she rewarded you. Yep. And double unto her, double, according to her works. Let me show you her works. Let me show you her works. Look up. See her works? You see them chemtrails? Yep. That's not even clouds covering the sky. And if you look over towards the sun, you see another one coming by. According to her works. That's nothing but burial, that's poison right there. So she needs, this place needs to be destroyed. Esau's in control of all this, the water, the food, everything you can possibly imagine. And, and, and Lord knows the shit that they're giving these kids these days, you can forget it, man. There's gonna be a bunch of zombies walking around here if the Lord don't destroy this place. Yep. Go ahead. And the cup which she has filled, fill unto her double. Yep. How much she hath glorified herself and live deliciously. Yep. So much torment and sorrow give, give her. her. Yep. For she said in her heart, I sit a queen and am no widow. Right. Well, now again, she saith. That's also telling you that what? America identifies herself as that beautiful woman. She uh, it identifies herself as that leading lady. Go ahead. For she saith in her heart, I sit a queen, sit a queen. and am no widow, yep. and shall see no sorrow. Right. Now, we read earlier in 2nd Ezra 16th chapter, about the men who are going to get drafted into this war and go over there and be put to death for the for the for the ideas of this country. Well, America's going to see sorrow. She's going to be made desolate. She's going to be a widow because the Lord's going to destroy this place. You know, we are the prophets of the Lord telling you these things. If you don't believe us, just sit tight. Sit tight. You're going to start to see it all unfold. You're going to catch a news article like, oh shit, this guy said something about that. Oh. Guess what these guys are talking about? Go ahead. Go, go, go ahead, right here, right here. Go ahead. Uh, it says, uh, therefore shall her plagues come in, in one, one day, day, death and mourning, yep. and famine, yep. and she shall be utterly yep. burned with fire. She shall be utterly burned with fire. Thermonuclear fire. America's gonna be burnt with thermonuclear fire. That's right. It doesn't That's matter right. what you believe or what you feel. Every weapon that's been yep, come on. every weapon that has been made has been made for destruction, has been made for death has been made for, for harmful purposes. Likewise, them thermonuclear missiles, and it's been made for America. Those missiles have been made for America. Go ahead. Yep, it says, for strong is the Lord who judge of her, and the kings of the earth, who have committed fornication and live deliciously with her, shall bewail her and lament for her mm -hmm. when they shall see the smoke of her burning. You see that? They're gonna see the smoke of her burning. You know, when, when, the, when the Twin Towers went down, they showed you this aerial pictures of the smoke just smoke rising, rising up and the smoke rising up. All they're doing is give you a simulation of what they're going to do to America, man. That's the that's a, a small little visual for you. You know, they showed the satellites, they showed these planes. Oh gosh, look at 
this is how terrific, how uh, terrible, how terrible, and the smoke was just going up, you know? <laughs> the smoke was just going up. Yeah, that was a, that was a funny, that was, well, it's funny now, but it wasn't funny then, man. When I say funny, it was a, you know, it's a funny feeling, a somber feeling. Right. That had fallen upon the, the whole country, everybody holding hands. And, right. Yeah, yeah. Praying all the streets, yeah, yeah. praying and holding hands. And not only that, if I could add two, you know, doing that 9 11 uh, building with that, that kind of fire, they were, they were, he, he was, so, the feelings were so hot that people have to commit suicide while they need to get burned in that right. building. Right. They were jumping in the so building and they, and, they were, and they were firemen were right. describing that, hiking him in a thundering sound. Right. There was, there was, there was, there was, there was, sliding down the side of the building as it was coming down. There was a, there was a show yeah. called Faces of Death, right? And in one of the, one of the series, this dude was up on the ledge and he's up there, I'm, his eyes, you can see, I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it. He's like on the 30th floor, right? He's up there, I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it. So the fireman's like, no, come on, come on, he's like, I'm gonna do it. Tell that bitch I love her. And he fucking, <laughs> all of a sudden he, he launched, right? He launched and everyone's like, oh. And of course they, they interviewed Jake he was like, yeah, yeah, you know, I seen him up there, and when he jumped off, it sounded like a slab of liver when it hit the floor. <laughs> he said, it sounded like a slab of liver when it hit the floor. Splat, you know, but yep, that was him. He lived that over, yo, but that's Jake. But, but you know, going back to what the, bro elder, the brother was talking about, in, 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 in the towers, people were jumping off them, jumping off those windows, and they was, I mean, again, they was coming down hard, you know? Yeah. And turned themselves into mincemeat, you know? Go ahead. Verse 10 it says, uh, standing afar off for the fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour is thy judgment come. Yep. And yeah. the merchants of the earth yep. shall weep and mourn over her, yep. for no man buyeth their merchandise anymore. There's gonna be nothing else to buy over here. Unless they wanna come pick up some dirt, some some pitch, some soot. Some gold for creatures, that's about it. And, it, uh, and, uh, and also too, if I'm gonna add to you, uh, like picking up merchandise, right? They said that America is the number one consumer in the world. Exactly. And, and, and there was this um, Elamite who said in a video a while back saying that, that they made stuff for so cheap, but yet Americans will buy it for a higher price and they amazed the amount of money that was spent, you know? And, 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 and it's not they're so happy that America is buying the, the, the merchandise. Yep. They can take off anything and, 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 and sell to America for a big price. But now, when the shit goes down, goes, goes on smoke, you know? Yep. Like you said, that's it. That's all she wants, man. Yeah. Verse 12, it says, The merchandise of gold and silver and precious stones and of pearls and of fine linen and purple and silk and scarlet and all thion wood and all manner vessels of ivory and all manner vessels of most precious wood and of brass and iron and marble and cinnamon and odors and ointments and frankincense and wine and oil and fine flour yep. and wheat and beasts yep. and sheep and horses. These are all the things that America has been known for, all these costly things, all these things that you know people love to, 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 to buy and to, to, to build from and to make things yeah. from. And horses and chariots and slaves and souls of men. See that? And slaves and souls of men was also on that list of things to be purchased and things to be sold. Okay? Souls of men. Yeah. And we, we understand that to be who? Who who were the primary people that were sold? The Israelites. Oh yeah. Bottom line. Go ahead. Uh verse verse 14. I don't, I mean, I don't know what tribe she is, but she ain't no hammer, for sure. Oh, no. <laughs> she ain't got that good hair. <laughs> so, she's a bugaboo. <laughs> for those of you, for those of you who've seen uh, school days, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Verse 14 it says, In the fruits that thy soul lusted after are departed from thee, and all things which were dainty and lovely are departed from thee, and thou shalt find them no more at all. Right. Why ain't they gonna find them? Because America's gonna be destroyed. That's why they're not gonna find them. 
That's why these kings, of the, these merchants of the earth are gonna will because of her. They're not gonna buy her goods anymore. It's gonna be all destroyed. That's right. And rightfully so. I just wanna read a few more Go ahead. It says, the merchants of these things, which were made rich by her, shall stand afar off from the fear of her torment, weeping and wailing, mm -hmm. and saying, alas, alas, that great city that was clothed in fine linen and purple and scarlet, and decked with gold and yep. precious stones yep. and pearls, yep. for in one hour so great riches is come to naught, and every shipmaster and all the company and ships and sailors, and as many as uh, trade by sea stood afar off and cried when they saw the smoke of her burning, saying, what city is like unto this great city? That's it, that's it. And the key point, you know, some, one of the, several key points, but one of that stands out is for one hour, one hour such great, such great riches have come to none, all right? And it's hard to even fathom. It took us, it took me about an hour to get here, you know? Traffic and all, you know? By the time it took me to get here, America's gonna be destroyed. Yeah. Think about that, man. Think about that. that's a heavy thought to think about. Yeah, man, but that's that's just to say too. You know, it take, it'll take an hour for it to completely burn. But then this one ain't gonna take but 20, 30 minutes to get over it. Mm -hmm. Now that they got they got ships that are setting up off the coast of the United States, it's gonna get over here even quicker. Right? We always thought because the, the title was ICBM that they were shooting directly from from Russia over here. But as you can see, what Russia's doing, they're, they're positioning their warships closer and closer to the borders of the United States, right? And so it ain't gonna take too long for one missile to go up, go up into the, uh, you know, the atmosphere and then come back down and then warheads come out of that missile mm -hmm. and, and drop on this place. What's that, uh, Joel, the, the second Good, chapter? Get on it. Uh, Joel, the second chapter, when it says, uh, yeah, yep. the, the, the land was green before them. Yeah, Garden of Eden. Yeah, yeah, Garden of Eden before them. The yeah, go ahead with that. And then somebody get Joel, the uh, second chapter. No, this is uh, Zephaniah chapter 1, verse 18. Yep, yep. Neither the silver nor the gold yeah, shall be able yeah. to deliver them in the day of the Lord's yeah, wrath. Because, hey, shalom, y'all watch next week. Because America is known as a, a, a rich nation, right? right? And so, in other words, uh, you know, your money is not going to be able to save you out of this. Oh, I got this you. this judgment is the judgment of the heavenly Father, right? And it's and it has to happen. That's right. Right. We we can we can say all we want as far as um, you know our feelings are, because of course those people on that sign are the most disenfranchised, right? So we can talk about our feelings, but this ultimately is the judgment of the heavenly Father, right? It, you you can you can argue that the flood happened just to separate this land over here so that the Lord can destroy it later, you know? It says, but the whole land shall be devoured by the fire of his jealousy, yep, yep. for he shall make even a speedy right. riddance. Right, it says the fire of his jealousy. What is he jealous about? The way that this land and the, and the people that run this land treated it the apple of his eye. That's where that jealousy came from, right? And that fire is speaking about, like we've been talking about all day, is those are those missiles that these other nations have ready and pointed in this direction? Man. You know, it's, you can you can think of it this way. We talk about how uh, the missiles today are called broken arrows, right? And so when it says in Jeremiah 50, uh, 51 to fourteen, where it says, "All ye that that bend the bow," you can imagine just a bunch of men standing at the, standing there with the with the arrows pointed. All in this direction, man. Let's get a missile. Yeah. If I find a missile, picture real quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, this is um, Isaiah 54, verse 16. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they talk about, you know, the, the building of a weapon, right? What's that? Isaiah what? 54, 16. That's the one. He yeah. says, Behold, I have created the smith that blew up the coal in the fire. Right. I have created the smith that blew up the coal in the fire. As a matter of fact, I was watching a video. I was watching a video on Elder Pastor Ramla this morning. He was going into this. You know, the, the smiths of, of, of ancient times, they made all kinds of things, hammers and, and all kinds of tools, but ultimately, those smiths made weapons of war, right? They made swords and axes, uh, parts that went on uh, what you call catapults, right? So that, that's what the smiths did, and it's, it's no different. And this time, those smiths being the scientists that put those uh, missiles together, right? And that bringing forth an instrument for his work. And I've created the waster to destroy. Right, and I've created the waster to destroy. Right? Ultimately, all these weapons that have been created in the earth are all of the spirit of the, of the Heavenly Father. He said he was, we read earlier that he's a man of war. Right? So all those weapons that we see, those weapons of destruction, guns, knives, swords, tanks, catapults, all these different 
uh, uh, instruments of war over over the history of men, they've all come from the heavenly father. And, and, and if, I, right? if I may add to uh, that, yep. the, the Lord also said this, that in, 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 in the last day, Knowledge shall, shall increase. Right. So the knowledge that the most I gave to to to, 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 to them yep. to build that nuclear missile is also a sign yep. of the end yep. that, that 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 is coming. Yep. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Talk, I got something real quick. Mm -hmm. uh, Isaiah 13, and I'll start at verse 17. Yeah. Because you mentioned they're not going to care about their money, yep. right? Yep. Yep. Uh, Isaiah 13 and 17. Behold, I will stir up the Medes against them, yep. which shall not regard silver, yep. and as for gold, they shall not delight in it. Right. Mm -hmm. In other words, you ain't gonna buy your way out of this one. Yeah, right. right. You can, like you have, we always talk about that book, their uh, Confessions of an Economic Hitman, and they use money to, to convince these third world countries to allow America to get up in there, right? But in this, you ain't gonna be able to buy yourself out. You going there's gonna be a war. There's gonna be a war of loud noise. It's gonna be a war of fire, right? That's the war that's gonna be fought. If we can go back to Isaiah 9 2, that'd be good. You got something to say? No, I just want to say something yep. because uh, Russia's always been under uh, sanctions and they've been they gotten used to it, so they built up some type of resistance to get through any kind yeah, of Yeah, so in other words, in other words, they've always yeah. had their their some level of independence where they didn't need the rest of the world to do that. They got their own oil, right? Right? They got money, all of those different things, right? So like you said, now now you can't sanction your way out of a disagreement because they, they're already self-sufficient and Vladimir Putin is a type of leader well he, he he's he really got his middle finger up to the rest of the world he, he, get, he got the, the, that Beanie Siegel mentality you get down and you lay down you don't have to be afraid of them and, and not only is he defending his own country he's also defending other countries that are are, are don't, that don't quite have the same resources as Russia, right? And like the elder said, I, don't, I, don't, I think it, it gets uh, it gets overlooked, right? Because it's a big part of prophecy. Uh, Russia being at one point in time uh, separate from each other. Uh, what was it? The, the, the something Soviet Republic or something like that. Yeah, right. So when you have that uh, with all those uh, Russian, let's say territories being separate from each other, and then. When the, the influx of the men of the Lord came out at the very same time, you had uh, Russia getting back together, saying that they were uh, again one power, right? One and all, all together. That's all. Pick up the waters. Pick up the waters. They come when you, the when, you, when you have, when you have, uh, you know, Russia driving around their, their missiles down the roadway so they can show the people their might. That means they mean business, man. Mm -hmm. They're not. They're not playing around. And like another point that the elder made here was that our people don't, uh, and I'm saying our people, that's, that's our people, yeah, for sure. But Americans don't know. Ameri most Americans have no idea that there's a, a, a war getting ready to happen, right? And this is, and, and the reason why you should pay attention to it is because this is one of the indicators that the Lord Yahweh Shai gave to let you know what time we're in, right? Mm -hmm. He said there was going to be wars, and, and they, well, no, they asked him in the third verse, they, they said, man, how are we supposed to know when, yeah, when, when, is, when are these things going to come to pass? When is this thing going to pop off? And one of the indicators that he gave was wars and rumors of wars. Those were, that was one of the indicators. So when we talk about war in this way, it's because it was prophesied that that would be one of the indicators to the time we were in. Right? Because it didn't. It, it, uh, what do you say? They said to him, they said, Lord. Will thou at this time now restore the, the kingdom unto Israel? He told him, he said, look, man, it ain't, it ain't for you to know the time. Right? But I'm going to give you these signs. I'm going to give you these clues. I'm going to give you these, these different things, these different prophecies that would be happening and coming to pass in those days. Go ahead, bro. You got something? Yeah. This is 2 Nezles, chapter 9, verse 1. Mm -hmm. He answered me then and said, measure thou the time diligently yes. yourself. Yep. And when thou seest part of the signs past, yep. which I have told thee before, yep. then shalt thou understand that it is the very same time wherein the highest will begin to visit the world which he made. Right. So this is this is the time. He said, look, measure thou the time. Right? How do you measure the time? You measure the time by those prophecies that he gave. He said, let's go to that real quick. You still got that Matthew 24? Let's, let's go there for, for a split second. Matthew 24 and 3. And, and as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, yeah, yeah. Tell us, 
what shall these things be? Yeah, man. You keep telling us that the end is coming. What's going on? How are we supposed to know? How are we going? What are going to be the indicators? All right. Go ahead. And what shall be the sign of thy coming in the end of the world? And Yahweh Shad answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. Right. For many shall come in my name, yep. saying, I am anointed. Right. You're going you to have people come and saying that they need. Right. That's one of them. Go ahead. And shall deceive many. Mm -hmm. uh, verse 6. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, right. but the end is not so yet. you hear about wars and rumors of wars. So all these different things we talked about at the opening. We talked about um, them implementing a the draft or passing a bill. That we're gonna, that was gonna allow them to implement the draft. We haven't had a draft since the '70s, man. Imagine that. Like my my grandfather, my my, my grand my actual grandfather got drafted and he fought in Vietnam. My grandfather, my, my mother's dad, got drafted in Vietnam. We haven't had a draft of that magnitude since those times, right? So it it, it shows the level of desperation that we're in, right? Because like the elder said, there was a time, you, like even though there was a draft in the, in the 60s and the 70s, right? Even though there was a draft, it was an honor for a family to send one of their own to fight for the country. It was a, it was a, like yeah, my son is back, brother. My son is in the military. My, oh, my, my nephew, he's a, he's a soldier in the army. It was, a, it was an honor for someone in your. I think we got enough space. It was, a, it was an honor for somebody in your family. To fight in the war, right? But now in these times, it's it's almost how do Dishonor. I say it? Say it again. Dishonor. It's a. I would say. I Dishonor. would say it this way. I, I agree with you. I would say it this way that it's now become mainstream to talk bad about America. It's become mainstream. Like, but it started off with the men of the Lord on the highways and byways. But now it's commonplace for people to talk bad about oh, America. We get slavery and. Maybe did this and did that. Now it's a now it's pop culture. Now it's about you know you got the uh, the, the, uh, the American soldiers not burning themselves alive, man. Right, yeah. right. Mm -hmm. So you imagine that? You imagine you imagine a kid? I'll be honest. There ain't no eighteen year old that I would have fight for me because they all they're all airhead, man. I have one. I have a nineteen year old. Mm. Yeah, I would never send him over to war. They, they, they not getting a good soldier in that guy. I love him to death. No, I'm, I, I know I'm. I said it sound funny. I love him to death, but they're not getting a. They're not getting no soldier. They getting a, a, a kid that want to be up underneath his mother. His mother want to tell him, oh, no, do this next. Okay, now do this next. They not getting a good soldier out of that guy, right? So if they imagine all the other 19 year olds and, and 20 year olds, when you when you the 20 year olds in America. They worried about going to have a good time. They want to get high. They want to get drunk. They want to. They want to. They want to have orgies. They just. They just. They, just, they play video they games. Play, and play video games. That's it. They'll. They'll fight in war on what's it, Call of Duty. They'll be on the Call of Duty all night, telling the motherfucker on the on, on the headset, "Fuck you," all night. Fuck you. Oh fuck. Oh, it's over there. It's over there. Yeah, whatever. The, whatever the fuck it is they do, they'll cut somebody out on, on the other side of the screen all night. But you want to send them over there where it's hot? Mm -mm. It I'm telling you, you're not getting a group of good soldiers. You're getting a bunch of kids that just have, we used to say, a leave it to beaver lifestyle. I wouldn't be no good soldier. I'd be in there back, so I've been sitting in the house, <laughs> playing basketball. Y'all might, you know, eat a, eat a sandwich or two. You know, I'm, I'm not worried about fighting in no war. America didn't make soldiers. But like the elders said earlier, those people over there in those countries, man, they've been fighting since they were kids. You got seven, eight-year-old kids carrying long guns. This is this is their life. Yeah, this is their this is their life. This is they're raising kids over there to be soldiers. Go ahead, bro. Real quick, real quick, real quick. But this is why America also puts these movies in place to try to corral the morale of these these teens by putting these war movies in. Uh, you got Mark, Mark Wahlberg. Long survivor, yeah, 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 all yeah. these type of movies they put in place to make them feel like a war hero. And, and, and it, they're hoping to drive the spirit of these young 19 year olds, as the elders talking about, to their feet to say, Yeah, I want to do it, I want to do it, I want to be a hero. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and you see the Navy SEALs they're coming under the water, and they come up, and their eyes are like this under the water, and they, they try to push that and push that, you know? But, yeah, yeah. And so, and so our, 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 this, the people in this country ain't ready to fight no major war, man. It, it's, and another thing too, another thing too, like like you had, 
<laughs> this is Isaiah 9 and 5. For every battle of the warrior is with confused noise. Yeah, yeah. And garments rolled in blood. Yeah, yeah. But this shall be with burning and fuel of fire. Right, and so this is going to be a, a different kind of war. That's right. Of course, you're going to need, you know, the pawns. That's what these, this 18 to 26, those young men are going to be the pawns that you just send out there to do whatever, right? Oh, they're going to turn the game. Yeah, 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 yeah. I just wanted to say that. When you get drafted into the military, a lot of men don't want to fight with somebody that got drafted in. Yeah. They don't want to fight with someone that, that had to forcibly get yeah. put into yeah. the military. Yeah. Yeah. They want to fight with men that, that right. to willingly went into the military. Right. 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 Let, me, let me tell you this also. A lot of these people that go in who got college degrees, they're automatically made officers. Mm -hmm. And now you're putting a guy with no military, no military experience, right. experience yeah. as your commander, right. leading you down some death valley where you, you know, he gonna tell you to go down there. You've been in the, you've been in this shit, as they say, you know, two or three years. But yo, we shouldn't go down there. But since he's a superior officer, you gotta follow that order. And that's another thing they don't want to do. They don't want to fight behind somebody that don't have experience. You know. I want to say something about that. It says, um, "Tough times create strong yeah. men. Yeah. Strong men create easy times. Yeah. Easy times create weak men. Yeah. Weak men." Create tough times. Yeah. You have to raise warriors, not parasites. Yeah, and, that, and that's all, all our people want to do, man. Is leech. Mm -hmm. I, I was watching this family over here. They they got their dad out for Father's Day, so it's, it's my man right here in the red shirt. Right. His wife is over there. He got all his kids there. Right. And so he looked. And he was listening to to the others, and he did like this. He waved his hand. <laughs> but, but yeah, you got to watch. Hurts. You got to watch. So so his, his wife is sitting over there. Taking ahead in, in affirmation, right? But my thing is this, right? Just point out the lie. That's it. You know, don't 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 be facetious about it. Point out that if there's anything we're saying that's not true, point it out. We'll have some uh, some discussion about it. We'll have some discussion. Is, is is has Russia set up warships at the coast of the United States? Is that is that true or is that false? Can we go into the scriptures and show you how that links up with prophecy? Yes. Right? So what is, what is it that you, you know, are disdained about? See, listen, the time for a strong America is over, man. So the time for a strong America is over, really. But, again, if you have, a, if you have the ability to go to, uh, you know, a, 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 the country that you, that's your home country, you should go there, man. That's right. Nothing good is going to happen here. Like you said, the elder mentioned this earlier, when we were reading Isaiah 47, he talked about how no one touched this place militarily, right? So you can you can say two wars happened here on the, on, the, on the mainland. You can say the Revolutionary War, and you can say the Civil War, right? But since then, there hasn't been any real uh, skirmish with another. Anytime we have, as a, as a country, a problem with another country, we go to that country and fight. They don't. They don't. They never do it here, but it's coming here. It's coming here, right? And, and, they're, and they're showing you that they're showing they're showing strength by putting their their, their ships in the coast of America. They're showing you that, right? So it's gonna it's gonna be brought to your doorstep, as they say, right? And most people don't don't know that. Most Americans don't know that. They're in the park enjoying the weather. They're planning, you know, the next barbecue. It's yeah, a lot yeah, 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 yeah. You're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna bring them beans. Yeah, Auntie Marie, then you're gonna bring them beans over here. Yeah. All right. Okay, I'll, I'll see you Tuesday or yeah. whatever it is. Got you, you know? Got a friend of yours, big, big, uh, big chicken <laughs> recipe. <laughs> 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 yeah, go ahead, bro. Uh, second Ezra 15 and 1. Behold, speak thou in the ears of my people the words of prophecy which I'll put in thy mouth, says the Lord, and cause them to be written in paper, for they are faithful and true. Right. Cause them to be written in paper. They are faithful. What's that? Uh, second second Ezra 15. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, so cause them to be written in paper, and they were written in paper. And they were written in paper so that we can read them today and understand what time we're in. Verse 3, fear not the imaginations against thee. Let not the incredulity of them trouble thee that speak against thee. For all the unfaithful shall die in their unfaithfulness. Right. All the unfaithful shall die in their unfaithfulness. Because there's going to be people that don't believe in this thing. Right? Mm -hmm. though, though a man told it to them. 
You're not going to believe it. And that's fine. That's fine because the scriptures say that, excuse me, excuse me, that it's going to come as a thief in the night to some. Right? The scriptures tell you that. So we already know that there's going to be people that don't believe this thing. You know? You know, Jay, man. Just, out, just outside having a good time, man. Riding bike and cooling out and chilling. You know? I mean, what are they going what are they gonna do on those side? Because you know what Jake boy, especially if they're with their lady. Yeah. They, they, they got that, they got that, you know what I'm saying, walking through the what's up, man? What's up, man? What's up, man? You know, all that, all that tough guy shit. And them missiles is coming up over the horizon, they're gonna be behind her. Oh yeah. Using, using her ass as a shield. You know? Says, Men's hearts fear, uh, yeah. I, I mean, it's, it's going to be such a telling time, you know. Uh, you say, you say, let's go to, let's go to, uh, I want to keep it Second Ezra was back in Second Ezra 15 and yeah. uh, verse 5. Behold, said the Lord, I will bring plagues upon the world, yeah. the sword, famine, death, and destruction, right. for wickedness have exceedingly polluted the whole earth, yeah. and their hurtful works yeah. are fulfilled. Yeah. Wickedness has exceedingly polluted the whole earth. I feel like you know, you can get really a snapshot of it when you look around, but you know, we can talk about all the wickedness that has been, you know, right? It's, 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 a, it's, a, it's, not a, it's not a good, healthy place to live in America. Now, you, you imagine this, right? Imagine this. Think about this for a second, right? We, we, we talk about working eight-hour days, right? So we try. Eight hours is, it goes by fast. You say if you're into your day. <laughs> you know your supervisor don't do nothing. You like just walk all the walking around here, you get a damn thing all day. I ball it. So, if you're a hard if you're a hard worker, man, your day goes by fast, man. Your day goes by fast. So let's okay, eight hours, right? But then you you gotta think about this, right? You you gotta drive home. So a lot of people, you know, they work. 30 minutes to an hour away from the house, right? So that's nine hours, right? Then when you get home, what you want to do, you want to sit on the couch for a minute. You really don't want to do nothing. You want to decompress in the day. So that's another, that's 10 hours, right? You got to take a shower, right? So that's what, 10, 10 and a half. You're going to have to take a shit. You got to eat, right? It's just, and by then, it's, it's, it's really, your work day is really 13 hours, right? right? And then you got to sleep for six, at least six to be fresh, for the next day, what's that? That's what, 19 hours? You really only got five days, five hours to yourself. And that's that's spent, you you gotta you gotta watch Law and Order. You gotta watch, you gotta watch all your TV shows, you gotta watch the game, the Celtics getting ready to play on Monday, you gotta watch the Celtics. Right? So it's really you don't your day your work day is 22 hours. It's 22 hours. So you think about that, right? And they only give you two days off. And it's almost like one day. It's almost like one day off. You gotta seem like you leave work Friday and then you right back Sunday night. You getting ready for the next the next work day. So you really only got one day. One day where you don't gotta worry about going to bed early for work or, or, or waking up early for work. One day. The rest of it is, is, is all geared towards your job. We're, we're in slavery, man. We're in slavery. And when you think about that, this is not a it's not a good place to live. I would, we, this, this, you showed me that video earlier, bro, that resonated with me, right? You got, the, you got, you got, it's, it was a, it's a parable, right? It's a kid, he, he, his, his father was rich, so he brought him to a, a poor family so he could see how the poor family live. And the kid surmised that, hey, they're the rich ones. We got two dogs, they got four, right? They, we, we, got a, we got a porch on the front of our house. They, can, they got fields that, that can see or that, that eyes can't see. He said, "It seemed like they got more than we got, and it's true, man. It's 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 you're, when you when you when you let me say this, let me calm down a little bit. When you've shaped your life around your financial income, right, and your job, when you when you center your life around those things, it confines you, right. But the way the Lord intended it for us to live is to be free of, of anybody ruling over us. We're supposed to have our own cattle. We're supposed to have the, our own land to grow our own food, right. And then when you have that, what else do you need?" Right, electricity. When the, when the sun go down, go to sleep. What do you need the lights for? You need lights. Get your little candle. You want to read before you go to bed. Get your little can, 
right? So all of the stuff that we have in, in modern society is really just a way to put us deeper into this this abyss that is America, right? So it's got to go. It's, it's got to go so that we can see what true freedom is like. We don't know. No, and nobody knows. Nobody can really say that even, even the richest people can't say that they're free. You imagine how much they pay in taxes. Imagine that. Paying half of your, half the, the money you get, you got to pay in taxes. That's not a free person. You should be able to live on your land, right? You should have enough land for you, your mother and your father, your wives, your children, right? And, 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 and that family should be able to grow on that land for as long as is 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 humanly possible, as long as that line continues, that piece of land should just grow and flourish. You should have a, a house over there, and then your neighbor should be your your cousin. Yeah, and then you 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 down the road. Your grandparents live down the road at the top of the roadway, where they got the hill, and you can see their house down the end. Let's go down to Granny's house, and that's how life should be like that, man. Back in the ancient times. Israel was, you know, had their own, each tribe had their own land, mm -hmm. you know, and it was all flourishing around the family, you know? That's how it, that's how it should be, man. But look, look, now, now you live a whole different state from your granny. Your granny, your granny's dying, you should be, if your, your grandmother's dying, you should be able to take care of her. Some, there should be somebody within arm's reach that can take care of your granny. There shouldn't be no such thing as nursing homes. There shouldn't be no such thing as assisted living. Your, the assisted living should be you and your family taking care of your grandmother, man. But you can't do it because you don't have the means. What you're going to do for that 13-hour work day, you're going to be gone. So you got to put her under somebody's care, right? Then you're, they, then you're, you're back in the, in the 80s, your grandmother and your grandfather got divorced. So your grandfather over here, your grandmother over there, he dying, she dying. You don't know who to, I got, I got to go over there and take care of him over there, and I got to go over there and take care of my grandma. It's, it shouldn't be like that. It shouldn't be like that. We should all be, all, if you got your family should be, that's freedom. Being able to touch your family. You, 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 when you go, when you read the scriptures, right, you had to you had to know that uh, uh, Ham, Shem, and Japheth was around for a little while, right? And men in those times, they lived hundreds of years. So they was around, so they got to see their grandchildren, their great grandchildren, their great, great that's how it should be. That's freedom. To be able to experience your family without worrying about them. Man. You know? Go ahead. Uh, Micah 2 and 10. Arise ye and depart, for this is not your rest, because it is polluted, it shall destroy you, yeah, even with the sword destruction. It is polluted, it shall destroy you. You know, I'm not as old as I look, man. I'm not as old as I look. 72 years old. I'm not, I'm not that old. You know? It's, 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 this world is, is draining. So it, it, when we say all of these things, it, it, we ha, it, this America has to go. Its way, its way, and the way that it's perpetuating is, is not healthy for anybody. Uh, so the book of Ecclesiastes, also known as the book of Sirach 39 and 25, it says, For good things are good things created from the beginning, so evil things for sinners. The principal thing for the whole use of man's life are water, Fire, iron, and salt, flour of wheat, yep. honey, yep. milk, and the blood of grapes, oil, and clothing. Yep. All these things are for good to the godly, That's it. That's so it. to the sinners they are turned into That's evil. It. That's it. Those that, that and, those, and those are the things you need for contentment, man. That's all you need. But America has created this thing where it's like, oh, I gotta have that. I gotta have a. Like, like I was thinking about this, right? Like, you know, my um, I remember this this teacher I had. I won't, I won't say his name, but he was a good dude, man. I never, I never had him as a teacher, but he was, he was, uh, his presence was felt in the school. He was one of those kind of black dude, real deep voice, real cool looking motherfucker. He had the, you know, the what they call my grandmother calls the cookie, but it's a wedge, like the can't go wedge. He used to add that on with the long leather jacket. This was a, a cool dude, looked like Shaft was one of the teachers, right? And I said that it's, it's important for, for men like that to be in the school system because your kids can be taught by somebody who's honorable and they have something to look to as an example. When you look at school today, it's mostly women teachers, right? And what I was saying is the reason why it's like that is because being a teacher doesn't pay very much. And there's this, there's this uh, expectation for a man to make a certain uh, amount of money 
to be able to be with a, a female. You see, modern day now, it's like, oh, if you don't make six figures, you don't have no parts with a, with a young lady, right? And so you, you as a man, you hear that, you say, like, I ain't be no teacher. Teachers make $40,000 a year. I, I, can't even, I can't even sniff a chick if, I, if that's the case, right? So it, it's, there's been this uh, deterrent away from the things that are important, right? And so now you have a bunch of women in the school raising their children. Right, granted, I, if there's a way you can homeschool your kids, man, I recommend it, man. But if, but a lot of us don't have the means to do it, right? But you think about that. You got a bunch of uh, embittered young young ladies in some cases teaching your kids, right? And then they look at your kid, and they look at your kid, just another black kid to them. They don't give a shit about them, right? And so they treat them the way they feel in the inside. You go, you go, you see these women that's calling the cops on, whoever called the cops on this kid, what's this kid's name? Uh, Tamir Rice, that had the toy gun. There was a lady that called the cops on that. That's the same lady that's in the school teaching your kids, same type of mentality. And that's how they think about your kids. So we have to get out of America. There's no, it's nothing good here. That's right. It's nothing good here. You should, you should be able to keep your kids at home. Your wife is at home and she teaches your kids. Well, what do they need to know? They gotta know how to read. They gotta know how to write. They gotta know how to count. That's it. Like, fucking who, who needs to learn about Napoleon? <laughs> Somebody needs to learn about that guy. Who the fuck is he? Right? Then what else are you gonna learn? What else are you gonna learn? Columbus. You gonna you gonna learn about fucking the Revolutionary War? And then Christmas addicts. And well, who the fuck gives a fuck about Christmas addicts? Fucking... Yeah, who the fuck cares about that guy? Who cares? You gonna teach you about Frederick Douglass, the most. A photographed person in the early, early 1800s. Who gives a shit about Frederick Douglass? But that's what you go to school. That's what you go to school for. Then you learn about Thurgood Marshall and Rosa Parks and Martin Luther King, and that's the end of it. And you don't need to know none of that stuff. You should be able to keep them home. Your, your wife should be teaching your daughters how to cook. She should be teaching your daughters how to sew. She should be teaching your daughters how to mentally, mentally care about the taking care of her family. Yeah. And the father yeah. should be teaching his son, look, we about to go build a fucking uh, goddamn cabin outside. We about to go build something. Every day when you when you wake up, we going to build a cabin or something, nah. something like that. Nah. You should be teaching your son, look, one day you're going to have to provide for, for your family of your own. You're going to have to know how to hunt. You know, I don't even remember. I used to go fish. When I was a kid, I used to go fishing all the time. You send me out there, I wouldn't know what to do. Don't send me fishing, brother. I don't know what to do. Exactly. You know, my son, he said, Daddy, can we go fishing? I was like, oh, hey, hey, man. It's been a long time since Daddy been fishing. I don't, know what to, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do, but it shouldn't be like that. Everybody, look, when you when you heard the stories about the apostles, the Lord Yahweh Shai was going around choosing them, it was all what? Fishermen. Yep. Paul was what? A tent maker. That means he was making something, somebody to live in. You see? These are, these are the, what was the Lord Yahweh Shai? A carpenter. A carpenter, yeah. yeah. Right? You, he, that's, those are the tools and skills that you that we should have, right? But right. we don't have we don't remember none of those kinds of things. Man. Most mostly most most men got their training or teaching from their father. Yep. And now yep. you have the father removed out of the house. Yep. And yep. now you have little boys growing up to be like their mothers. Yep. Sashaying and yep. all this they twerking and yep. all this all this shit. Yep. Whatever yep. they're doing. Yep. And this is what America accepts. That's acceptable yeah. now. Yeah, you got you got this you, you, you know, this is a video out of Bow Wow. He was sassing. Swirling his finger around talking shit, right? And I was looking at that man. That's just because you're aggressive don't mean you're masculine. Right? Just because you have this level of uh, of anger towards you doesn't mean you're being a man. Men, when you when you look at you know one of my favorite movies is The Godfather. And you know why? Because they were even though they were enemies with certain families, they still were able to get together and be diplomatic about it. That's masculinity. The scriptures tell you to be slow to anger. But you got, you got, you see these dudes, I'll be watching these little basketball clips. Somebody will do a little crossover and then score. And then the dude that got scored on, now he chest bump on, oh, fuck you, and they, now they fighting. Yeah, it's just a bunch of girls, man. You know? Go ahead, bro. Start. Proverbs 22 and 6. Train up a child in the way he should go. Yeah. And when he is old, he will not depart that's from it. it. That's it. Because that's all he going to know. That's all he going to know is what you, what you teach him and what you give him. Right? So real freedom is to be able to be around your, your children at all times. But but mostly again, your most of your day is being consumed with being in on the plantation farm. Right? You should be able to teach your kids 
You, who know how to, who, you know how to ride in a canoe? You know how to ride in a canoe? Man, you're a bad dude, brother. I asked the wrong person. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to say no. Now that he's like, I'm father's there, right? Now there's a new trip going on in the media. Yeah. Where single mother said that, oh, I'm, I'm the father and the mother now. You yeah, know, and, yeah, and, and, yeah. And, 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 and they glorify all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, from the up the chest, and that you see. I have to be that dad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah,
when, uh, when King David, you know, crushed all this nation and had them all under, under his subjection, you know, now, now there was no more war. And, and, what, and what did those nations did? They came in and started building the, 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 the kingdom. And each was a taskmaster, you know, to yeah. tell them what to do. Yeah. You know, how to build this, you know, to be adapted, and they were contributor. All these was coming in to yeah. contribute to King Solomon. Yeah. And, and, yeah. It, 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 and it was a very good example, you know, how when you mentioned about Bathsheba, you know, when he walks in, and then, he, and then he saw King Solomon, he had no idea he was the king. It's, it kind of like reminded me of coming to America, yeah. you know, yeah. where I, King where, Solomon's servant was king. King it, Solomon. It, exactly. Like 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 when Prince a, um, a king came in, he, do, he, he, do, he doesn't appear as a king. Yeah, he had his McDonald's uniform. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> he hit underneath that, but he had great wisdom, yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. It, but he was actually a king. Yeah. You know, so and, 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 uh, and when she found out who, who King Solomon was, who he was, you know, and that he was actually the the, the, the wisest king that people have been talking about for for uh, about the, the, the from lands near and far. And yeah. Far, yeah. she was amazed, you yeah. know. And then she, she thought, said, she said, surely the wisdom, you know, it, basically your reputation precedes you. Yep. You know, and she and she basically told him that you are as wise as the people say you are. Oh yeah. You know? And they never had kids. <laughs> yeah, yeah that's true. You gotta put that in there. Yeah, they were saying they read that. Keep it again. No, I read that before I got the truth. I was, I was damn about some whole oh, yeah, but the queen she was she had came down with Israel, and what happened was Solomon put food on her. And they came down with Solomon, and he tried to drink some water. It was a. You gotta read that fucking thing if you want to get a good laugh. But uh, I went, at the time, I was, I was into it. Ecclesiastes chapter 10 verse 1 A wise judge will instruct his people And the government of a prudent man is well ordered As the judge of the people is himself So are his officers And what manner of man the ruler of the city is Such are all uh, they that dwell therein Right, right And so that's the, that's, those are the types of, of rulers we're going to have to be Right you know, we're gonna we're gonna be delegating what goes on on the earth. Exactly. Nothing's gonna happen on earth without consulting with the nation of Israel first, and then, of course, without us consulting with the Lord Yahweh Shah, ultimately consulting with the Heavenly Father. The things are gonna be done down on the earth by the power of the Heavenly Father, not by the, the will of your own stomach and belly. You know, that's real rulership. To go to the the, the the one who offers the rulership to the people, the Heavenly Father. That's real rulership, dude. and that's what's going to happen. We're going to we're going to delegate what goes on in the earth, and of course, the spirit and power of Yahweh Shai has to be honest in order for us to do that. You know? I don't I don't I don't think we have no idea what it's going to be like. None. We can imagine, right? We can we can fantasize about what it's going to happen, what's going to be like, and still, it's not even close to me. What the Heavenly Father has in store for us. It's gonna be it's gonna be a beautiful kingdom to live in. Right? It's gonna be a beautiful kingdom to live in. There's no you don't have to worry about being cheated. You don't have to be worried about being cheated unfairly, right? But you got something wrong? I'm sorry, but I know we keep skipping you, brother. Right. You talking about the king that made me Yeah, yeah, no, you got it, brother. We learned in 24 and 14. Yeah. Thou shalt not oppress an hired servant that is poor and needy, whether he be of thy brethren or of thy strangers that are in thy land within thy gates. And that his day thou shalt give him his hire, neither shall the sun go down upon it, for he is poor and set his heart upon it. Lest he cry against thee unto the Lord and he sin unto thee. Yeah, man. So get paid at the end of the day, that's like unheard of. Even, even that, even that, man. You're just getting paid for what you did. Right. Right, right. Back in Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 3, an unwise king destroyeth his people, but through the prudence of them which are in authority, the city shall be inhabited. The power of the earth is in the hand of the Lord, and in due time he will set over it one that is profitable. Right, one that's profitable to the earth. Because what's, what's more important to the earth than how you take care of it? Right? You know, we, we, we talk about. Uh, you know, we, we just, we take trees, right? We just cut them, right? We just cut them down, start building shit. And, you know, there's certain trees that you shouldn't cut down, man. There's certain lands that you shouldn't mess with and bother until. There's certain waterways that you that you shouldn't fill up, right? If there's a waterfall, you should leave that, right? Because that's how you can get power. Do those little waterfalls, you set up a little hill, 
Well, that, that the spins and that waterfall just keeps turning that thing. You got that's unlimited power, right? So you can, to fill up a uh, you know a river or something like that's all that's all wickedness, man. But we're gonna we're gonna take care of the earth because really this is our business because this is where we live. Now, just to uh, back you up. Uh, Earth is also a reference to like a house, you know. You want to yeah. always keep your house spick and spin. That's right. That's right. That's right. You got Esau down here on Sweet. Yeah. You got Esau down like plastic, like you know, in the ocean. In the ocean. Yeah, it's all, it's all, all the things that 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 make up living here on Earth, right? Is 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 all being polluted, right? So we, we read uh, Micah two and ten earlier, along with it being morally polluted, right? It's also actually physically polluted. You know? Go ahead. It's uh, Romans 8 and 18. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present mm. time yeah. are not worthy to be compared mm. with the glory that shall be revealed in us. Right. Mm. For the earnest expectation of the creature waited for the manifestations of the sons of God. That's right, man. That's right, man. So that even, the re even the rest of the earth, the birds ready for us to rule? Yep, yep. Right? The birds, you know, birds, they got high cholesterol. You know that stuff that we, you know, they eat a little McDonald's french fry out here. They gonna eat that french fry, man. They, bird, birds got high blood pressure. You know, the squirrels, they, they, they got, you know, they suffer from heart disease. Everybody is suffering because of Esau. Everybody, right? That's why, look, you, you go through the park, the elder points this out. There's certain, there's certain trees that look, that look a certain way. So it's, they, they look like that because bodies have been buried underneath. Mm. You know, so even the trees they they crying out, they suffering. It says that I got that book. Yeah, yeah. It's a lot. Yeah, yeah. Isaiah fourteen mm. and uh, seven. The whole earth is at rest and is quiet. Yeah. They break forth into singing. Yeah. Yeah. The fir trees rejoice at thee, yeah. and the cedars yeah. of Lebanon saying, Since thou art laid down, mm -hmm. no fellas come up yeah, against no thee. No fellas come up against thee. Like you got you got the um people people yeah. marginalize yeah. the presence yeah. of the yeah. rainforest. In Brazil, right? That, uh, I'm sorry, am I saying rain, <laughs> rainforest is the right word? Right? And then what are they doing? They going down in there trying to cut that place up, man. Why? Why would you do that? Those like these forests and these ecosystems, it all matters, man. Ain't not one thing that that ain't not one thing. Ain't not one thing that don't matter on this earth, man. It all it all is important, right? You used to have, you should be, you should be able to go to. You got to feel sick. You should be able to go to the ocean, stand and sit in the water for the all that sodium and the minerals from the water. That should be able, you should be able to go into here. You know, this is our zero twenty-four four. The earth mourneth and fadeth away. Yeah. The world languishes and fadeth away. Yeah. The haughty people of the earth do languish. The earth is also defiled under the inhabitants yeah, thereof. The earth is also defiled under the inhabitants thereof. Yeah, yeah man, keep going. Because they have transgressed the laws, yep. changed the ordinance, yep. broken the everlasting covenant. Yep. Therefore have the curse devoured the earth, and they that dwell therein are desolate. Therefore the inhabitants of the earth are burnt and few men left. That's right, that's right. So that's why this place got to go, man. That's why this place has to go. The earth is, is is being choked, right? The earth is being choked and is being choked by the cancer that is eating. Because they don't care about the wellness of the earth because really it doesn't belong to them. They only care about what they can gain from it. That just goes back to the old saying, when the shit ain't yours, you don't give a shit about it. You can destroy it and tear it up. And when it's yours, you take pride in it. And the scripture says the earth was given unto you know, for our sakes. Therefore, Esau has been given dominion over the earth, but he understands at the end of the day, it's not going to be his to, to, to reign over. Right. You know? If I may be yeah. speaking real quick, because you better you brought out how, how the animals are going to be at peace, you know, or um, what's, what's, what's watching this wood. Now, this is um, Isaiah chapter 11, we'll start verse 6. He said, The wolf also shall dwell with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the kid, and the calf and the young lion and the family together, and little children shall lead them. And the cow and the bear shall feed, the young ones shall lie down together, and the island and the, and the lion shall eat straw like, like the ox. Mm -hmm. And the sucky child shall play on the horn of the apse, mm -hmm. and the winged child shall put his hand on the, can't even say that word, the cockatrice? Cockatrice. 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 Then, they shall not hurt 
nor destroy in the holy mountains. So you're gonna have little children that's been playing with snakes, you know, with lion, with tigers, li tigers, and lion, and even the lamb. Right, the, Lord, the Lord's gonna turn back the, the hand where we're gonna have dominion over all the animals. Right. Yep. We had dominion over all the animals at one certain point. But I wanna make a statement though. The brother read in Romans 8, uh, 8 and 18, I believe it was, yeah. that the sufferings of this present time, we are currently suffering, man. If you profess yourself to be a man of the Lord and be involved in the truth, you're suffering, man. You, you're not gonna, you're not gonna remove yourself from the suffering, no matter what you do, no matter what you think. This is where we've been brought here to suffer. And the more you get deeper into this thing, the more the, the heavier the sufferings come upon you, because the, the the wisdom that you are that the Lord instills in you, you now see the truth of what's going on around here. So we're constantly enduring. We're constantly trying to stay afloat in this bitch because we are suffering. You're not gonna say to yourself, oh, since I left Great Millstone, you know, my life has been better. I don't know if y'all remember, there was a couple cats that said that shit. Since I left Great Millstone, my life has been better. Well, better for what? You just went back into the world and Satan got a hold of you. Now Satan has convinced you that you're now living a beautiful life. All right, go ahead, bro. I know you're supposed to have something on deck. Oh, I got um, Revelation. 11 and 18 mm -hmm. and the nations are were angry and thy wrath is come in the time of the day that they should be judged mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that thou shouldest give reward unto thy servants the yep. prophets yep. and to the saints yep. and them that fear thy name small and great yep. and shouldest destroy them which destroy the earth right so we we've been told and i'm gonna say it this way we've been told that the lord don't give it wasn't thinking about esau the lord hates wickedness Esau is wicked. So anything that's wicked, the Lord don't like, man. And the Lord's gonna do away with all wickedness, man. And this is why we come out here on the highways and byways as servants of the Lord, to expose and to let you know about all wickedness. The Lord, the scripture says, for wickedness have exceedingly polluted the whole earth. So with that being said, the Lord's gonna come down here and destroy them that destroy the earth. And that's that needs to be done. Because by letting Esau, by trying to bring Esau and these heathens into the kingdom, what do you think is going to happen? The scriptures doesn't say nothing about them being changed. It right. doesn't say nothing about the, the, the law, the Lord writing the, the laws in their inward parts. So they're still going to be the same. They're, going, they're profane outside of this temple. So therefore, by letting them come up and being brought down, we bring, just, you, you just fostering more wickedness, man. Right. All right, go ahead. Uh, just trying to land back on what you were saying mm -hmm. before uh, much wisdom. Yep. Uh, Ecclesiastes 1 and uh, 18. For in much wisdom is much grief. grief. Yep. And he that increaseth knowledge increaseth sorrow. Right. Much wisdom is much grief. And he that increaseth in knowledge increaseth in sorrow. And you, and you find yourself, the more the more the Lord opens up to you and reveals to you, the more pissed off you get. And the more the more heartbroken you get. Like, God damn. Here you are. You out here trying to tell your people this, that, and the third. But what are they doing? And that's why we, and I was saying to the elders, I'm tired. What I'm tired of seeing cats who think they got the word, this cat up here talking shit, coming down here talking shit. I'm tired of seeing if, 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 if the Lord gives us that ability put to, to lay hands on people for a minute, may the Lord give it to us. Because that's frustration that's built up. And that's the, these individuals who are going against the word, whom they understand the word, but they're going against the word. See, go ahead. Ecclesiastes 7 and 7. Surely oppression make a wise man mad, and a gift destroy up the heart. Right. And that and that goes right along with what happens here in Babylon. If you get a if you get some type of lucrative, if you get some type of lucrative contract, right, your mindset's gonna change. If you have, if you if you're in the truth and all of a sudden nigga hit the lottery, your mindset's gonna change. We had cats that have been in the truth, that have hit the lottery. And when that has taken place, all of a sudden, it became a dark shit. Oh, no, no. Listen, man, we are grounded in this thing. This money system is going to collapse. This whole, this whole way of life is going to be rooted out. And this is why we're un we understand that we're suffering in this present time. This is not a prosperous time to live. We don't leave camp and be like, yeah, tomorrow's Monday, we're gonna get up, go to work, get in, and get up. We leave camp, the sorrow comes upon you because this is truly the only time you, you're at peace, man. When you're with the brotherhood, the spirit is rolling, the prophecies are coming out, the scriptures are coming out. The minute we start breaking down and camp folds up, we go, and all of a sudden you start thinking, 
Right now, you ain't thinking about home. You ain't thinking about, you know, the bills. You ain't thinking about that. You in the spirit, you brothers thinking about scriptures, brothers thinking about the stories and the scriptures. But the minute you leave here, you walking up that hill, it's like, damn, right through this week, fucking, I got a fucking mortgage, the bills, the, the insurance, everything, man, everything. It's heavy, man. Hold on, brother, go ahead. One more. Uh, Proverbs 30 and 7. Yep. Two things have I required of thee. Deny me them, not before I die. Mm -hmm. Remove far from me vanity and lies. Give me neither poverty nor riches. Mm -hmm. Feed me with food convenient for me, mm -hmm. lest I be full and deny thee. Yep. And say, who is the Lord? Right. Or lest I be poor and right. steal and take thy name of my power in vain. Right. That's what people do. When people, when people are on the bad end of things, they curse the Lord. The Lord, the Lord ain't do nothing for me. The Lord put you in that position for a reason. And people who got money ain't thinking twice about the Lord. You think Jay-Z's and all these cats, you think they're talking about their, their nationality? And those who do mention their nationality, they, they get banned. They get they get blackballed, if you will. You see? So again, it's it's a it's a blessing to be where we're standing right now. And to have the word that the Lord has given unto us, man. It's a blessing. Go ahead, brother. No, no, no. This is about you up here. The Lord was rich when he became poor for us. That's, that's right. But but look at look at Solomon. Right before Solomon became the, 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 the king of Israel, what he asked, he didn't ask the Lord for riches. He didn't ask for these things. He asked for wisdom to rule his people. That's what he asked for. And, 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 and Jake today, they want to, I want to get this, I'm going to get, I'm going to fight it, I'm going to get this, I'm going to get the king, because that's what Solomon's brother was like. His brother was like, yeah, he got all his boys up there, like, yeah, when we get the throne, we're going to be causing all kinds of havoc. Oh, yeah. You know? Solomon gave him a chance, but he ended up getting put to death. Go ahead. This is Hebrews 12 and 5. And ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you mm -hmm. as unto children. Yep. My son, despise not the chastising of the Lord. That's right. Nor faint when thou art rebuke of him. That's right. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasten, and scourgeth every son whom he receive. Right, who the Lord loveth, he chasten. And this is what we gotta keep in mind, man. Whenever we going through something, be thankful. Take it cheerfully, yeah. Because all things are done by the hand of the Lord. Sometimes the Lord puts you through a situation. Maybe to slow you down a little bit. Sometimes men can't perceive and understand that. They think of that position because, they, they, you know, their they girl called a cop. Oh, the Lord's cooling you down for a minute. And you got to recognize these things. It's giving you a time to sit there and reflect into what? Examine yourself. Damn, you know what? I fucked around. I shouldn't have been doing that. So, therefore, I'm in this position. I got to understand that the Lord put this on the floor. He driving around in a Lamborghini with a fucking ticket on it. <laughs> Stupid ass. Thinking he's rubbing his own engine and shit. Probably a $20 ticket on there. Let's see about that. Go ahead, brother. It'll come back to you. Uh, this is Hebrews 12 and 7. Yep. Even if he endured chastising, the Most High dealeth with you as with sons. Mm -hmm. For what son is he whom the Father chastened it not? Right. Didn't he chastise his only begotten son? Right? How much more are we? And this is why he was instructed to take it shift. When thou art changed and brought to a lower state. Right? Again, the sufferings of this world ain't going to be compared. So we got to sacrifice what we're here. You know? We got to say, you know what? There's better things to come. Some men who come out and they endure for a little while and they realize, damn, I can't do it. Go back into the world, next thing you know, they shop with the lineups, you know, they back on the street, you know, wheeling and dealing and hold it, hold it, you know? But again, we're being wise and faithful servants. These things that we're going to, we know it's just gonna last for a short time. So therefore, when we come out, sacrifice our lives, make our bodies that live in sacrifice, we take heed to the teachings that we were taught, we're holding fast to these things, and may the Lord Yahweh wash me all shy see that we took these things and we, we we harvested them and thought about them and meditated on them and that he may reward us openly when the time comes, man. All right, go ahead. I say, but, ye, but if ye be without chastisement, whereof are our partakers, mm -hmm. then ye are bastards and not sons. Right, so people think that, oh, I'm in Babylon, I'm living a good life, you know, ain't no harm ever come to me or nothing bad has ever come to me. They think that the Lord is dealing in a, in a, in a, in a, a graceful way unto him. But you can think that way. I'd rather be chastened. I'd rather be. I'd rather be under the under the under the heat, so to say. Because why? Because that's going to keep me grounded. The minute you go outside and you start living a great life and things start coming to you in abundance and and now you're willing and dealing and you feel good. You feel like there's a weight lifted off your shoulders. You feel free. 
you gotta start thinking about it. You gotta start thinking about that. Cause you know what? There are times when these things happen to men and men realize and know that this, it ain't right. Wait a minute, something ain't right. When I was under the umbrella of the Lord, you know, I felt that sort of that sense of security, but also I had that fear in me that kept me in the right space. But now, once they leave from underneath that umbrella, they're out there wild and they think it's all good. It's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living power, man. All right, so I'm gonna come. You got? Some, I'm gonna come here, here, and here. Okay. Uh, right. This is Revelation 12 and 11, and it reads, "And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb yep. and by the word of their testimony. Yep. And they love not their lives unto death. death." That's right. They love not their lives unto death. So we don't listen. We ain't over here happy, man. We ain't happy. We're not. We're not over here flourishing. We're barely getting by. We're scraping by. You know, and we just hope and pray that Yahweh Bash Shai has mercy on us and, you know, delivers us up from the said peril that's coming here, man. You know, again, like the brother read in Romans the 18th chapter, 18th verse rather, you know, the, the, the sufferings of this time. We are suffering. Any man of the Lord, anybody that's in the, this thing of ours, we're all suffering. And if you ain't suffering, then you're in the wrong place, man. You're in the wrong mindset. Go ahead. Uh, I'm gonna continue. Uh Hebrews 12 and 9, furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh which corrected us, mm -hmm. and we gave them reverence. Yep. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the Father of spirits and live? That's right. That's right. When a man says he doesn't fear anymore, and he don't fear the Lord, and there's no need to fear the Lord, there's nothing you can say to that. There's nothing you can say to that. The Lord's not looking, the Lord's not looking for you to be a buddy. The Lord's looking for you to fear him, man. Right. That's what the Lord's looking for. If you think otherwise, oh, the Lord is, you know, this and that. I don't have to, I don't have to fear the Lord. But why not? The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, man. Go ahead. Uh, Proverbs, Proverbs yep. 1 and uh, verse 5. A yep. wise man will hear and will increase learning. Yep. A, wi a man of understanding will attain unto wise counsel. Yep. To understand a proverb and the interpretation, the words of the wise and their dark sayings. Yep. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, right. for fools despise wisdom and instruction. Right. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, right? The Lord is not looking for best friends. The Lord is not looking for a guy that's going to just run around and talk, man. We fear the Lord, and this is why we, 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 we're very mindful of the things that we do, the things that we say to one another. It's very important, it's very important man. And with that fear, it's gonna keep you grounded. You may be, you may be out one night and thinking, yeah, you know what? You got a club on the left side. Let me drive. Yeah, you know what? Let me take my ass home. Let me take my ass home. Yeah. Because that 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 mindset that you're living in is keeping you right. Because at the end of the day, sometimes going to these clubs ain't nothing good gonna happen in there. Yeah. Especially if you're going to a club back around the old old neighborhood. The niggas, you know, niggas be shooting up and yep. doing all kinds of wickedness. Next to you get caught out there now, what? You're talking about, yeah, you're slucky, y'all. Like, I shouldn't have been out there. So my bag, you know. Go ahead. Go ahead. Let me get brother right here. Go ahead. This is uh, uh, Proverbs 15 and 16. It says, yep. Better is a little with the fear of the Lord than great treasure and trouble therewith. That's it. That's it. And again, most people are striving for what? Things of this world. It's better to have that little bit of fear of the Lord than to want to be a master in, 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 in Babylon, man. Oh, yeah, the Lord knows my heart. How many times you hear people, the Lord knows my heart? Well, do you know what the word of the Lord says? You think the Lord knows your heart, but do you know what the Lord said? All right, go ahead, Elder. This is uh, Jeremiah 4 and 22. It says, for my people is foolish. They have not known me. They are sottish children, and they have none understanding. They are wise to do evil, but to do good they have no knowledge. Right, why is that? Because of the teachings of this world, mm -hmm. you know? And again, our people hate to relieve, them, relieve themselves from, from the eating of pork, from the, the wickedness that they've been saturated in throughout their life. Oh, this good. is all they know. Right. And this is why you understand and you know that it's all of Yahweh Bashmi Al Shai that we have been brought into this thing. And if we have been selected from the beginning, this is our lot. You know, when you see Jake out there doing wicked wickedness, you're like, God damn. They're doing all kinds of shit. You just see these videos they put up here. World star. Jake is out of goddamn control, man. But again, this wasn't their lot. Even though they've heard brothers, they've seen brothers, they walked by brothers' camps many a times. They even like, you know, gave me that whole shit. It's all gonna come back, man. 
it's all gonna come back to, to, to haunt him. Go ahead. This is Galatians 5 and 16. It says this, I say then, walk in the spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Right, walk in the spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. And you know what's one of the one of the worst things for the lust of the flesh? Is chasing after these women. It's one of the worst things out there, man. And this is why we always say every time we leave camp, whatever you do, be spiritual. Just read that again. It says Galatians 5 and 16, then I say then, walk in the spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Right, the lust of the flesh will get you hemmed up, man. Chasing after women, you know, trying to be a drug dealer, trying to be, trying to be, you know, do all these things in the world, chasing after that, chasing after that flesh, you know, chasing after that lust, man. So we tell brothers, be spiritual. And if, and if there's something going down, reach out to brothers. Yo, shut on, brother. You know, just thinking about, we think about this. I was thinking about going to see my ex. She want me to go down there. Yo, bro, where she at? Down, nah, I mean, nah, brother, don't go over there. Yeah, nah, I don't think it's wise to go over there. Let that shit go, you know? Or, or brother may be looking for, you know, a little something to tidy him up for the night. If a brother call and reach out, I'm like, yo, nah, bro, you all right, just chill, lay low, bro. You know, but again, this is what the brotherhood's for. This is what we teach with each other. This is how we, this is how we communicate with each other, you know? Go ahead, real quick. Right, now, this is the first angel, chapter 4, verse 26 and 27. He says, yeah, many that be that have one out there wish for a woman right. and become served for their sex, right. many also have perish, right. have her and serve for a woman. So right. they perish all for the sake of woman. Right, right. Yeah. And, that, and, that, and it's tough, man. You go out in this world, you got a desire, if your lust, your desire is to have as many women as you can, and that's gonna be your downfall, man. You got something? Nah, that. Alright, good, brother. Yeah, that's okay. That's good, brother. Ecclesiastic is 18 and 30, it reads, Go not after thy lust, but refrain thyself from thine appetite. Right, go not after thy lust, but refrain thyself from thy appetite. Refrain thyself. You know, listen, man, we all, we all, you know, looking at, you know, we all want, you know, women, we all like women, you know, men, we, we Israelites. You know, but again, but again, the Lord is going to give you a woman that you should be satisfied with, even though she's going to give you help. She's going to give you help, you know, in the long run, but yeah, that's your woman. But when you start chasing after these women, it's going to do what? Next thing you know, you got kids. You got kids, you know, you know and these left and right. Kids left, yep, kids left and right. Yeah. Next thing you know, she got, she calling Esau on you, 5 at the door. Yo, come out here, you know, what's the situation? You know, uh, there's gonna be a restraining order. Go ahead, bro, you got it. There's gonna be a restraining order on you. All right, so be mindful, man. Be mindful. In fact, they even show like on, uh, um, on, on, on the quarter, right? Mm -hmm. when, that, uh, when, when you look at the, in the court, in the, in the, uh, when, when they brought the man forth, and then you got the man in the court, and you, and you got the man in tears crying, saying that, you know, that's all I have left. What more do I have to give? There was this, this one that he was crying in tears because he's here and he's getting all the money for child support, you know, and she's not doing anything to take care of the child. And he's trying to defend himself, but we see, he showed that he, he's here for that kid, but no, God don't want to hear anything about that. They don't want to hear anything about that. They don't, they, 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 they don't want him to, to, to pay more money. They don't give a damn. Yeah. one. Uh -huh. Oh, this is Isaiah yeah. 1 and 3, and it reads, it says, the ox knoweth his owner, yep. and the ass is master's crib. Yep. But Israel do not know, and my people do not consider, a sinful nation, a people laden with iniquity, a seed of evildoers, children that are corrupted, and they have forsaken the Lord, they have provoked the Holy One of Israel unto anger, and they gone away backward. It says, why should, it says, why should ye be stricken anymore? Ye will revolt more and more. The whole head is sick, and the whole heart fainted, and from the sole of the feet, and even onto the head, there is no soundness in it, but the wounds and bruises, and uh, petrified, petrified sores, and they have not been closed, and neither bound up, and ne neither glorified with an, an, um, ointments. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and truth be told, we are all sick, man. And this is why Yahweh Shai became that physician unto us. All right? And, 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 that, and that physician has been sent unto us as the comfort of the book. Right? And the Lord has opened up our our, 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 our our mind to receive and understand these things from our teaching, from the, from the men that taught us, from the head of apostles and elders, the bishops on down. All right? Here we are. 
you know, one thing one thing is for certain, man. When you come into this thing, you, you, you throw away that old man. You put away that old living, right? Go ahead. Oh, give me. Go ahead. Romans 12, and uh, I'll go straight to the point, verse yep, two, 2, and be not conformed to this world, yep. but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, yep. that ye may prove what that is good and acceptable and perfect, the will of the most high. Right, that you may prove what is good and acceptable. So you got to change your mindset, your thought process. You can't come into the truth and be a nigga in the week during the week and try to be a brother on the weekend. Right? You got to get rid of that old man. It says the inward man goeth new day by day. Justice 4 and 5. Yep. Alright. It says, But unto Cain and to his offering he had not had not respect. And Cain was very wroth, and his countenance fell. Right, because Cain gave a, a, a I'll say a, a cheap blessing, a, a sacrifice unto the Lord. Alright, go ahead. Uh-huh. And the Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou wroth? And why is thy countenance fallen? Mm -hmm. It says, If thou dost well, Thou shalt not be accepted? Right. The Lord's asking if you do as well, won't you be accepted? And this is what this is what also we push, man. If you do well in the sight of Yahweh Bash Miao Shai, he will accept you, man. Again, when we leave here, we leave camp and brothers go home, we don't have no problems laying our head on a pillow at night. We're, 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 comfort, we're comfortable in the spirit where we know that we have done everything the right way, man. We've been honest from day one, we're comp the way we were taught, all right? So when we speak amongst each other, we can speak with full hearts. As we speak these proverbs and precepts, we speak with full hearts. Because why? We're comfortable, we're, 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 we're content in the spirit with what we do and how we con uh, conduct ourselves. Finish off? It, come. it says, if thou does not well, sin lieth at the door. If thou does not well, sin lieth at the door. So again, we tell brothers, listen, if you do well, the Lord's gonna accept you, man. When you wanna fuck around, try to play both sides of the tracks. The Lord's gonna, the Lord's gonna root you out. Root your ass right out, man. All right, so be mindful of that. Be well, do well in the sight of Yahweh Bar Shemiah Shai. Fear the Lord, meditate on his words. Think about what he's told us, the instructions we've been given, man. A lot of those instructions came out of the Old Testament as people like to, you know, argue about. But again, that's a foundation for you to get wisdom, man. When you when you pick up the Apocrypha, right? The Apocrypha was written in the ancient times, right? How much wisdom can you extract from the Apocrypha? Loads and loads, man. Well, some people have a problem with that. Go ahead, Elder. This is uh, Matthew 18 and 1. It says, uh, it says, uh, at the same time came the disciples unto Yahweh Shai, saying, who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? Mm -hmm. And Yahweh Shai called a little child unto him and mm -hmm. set him in the midst of them and said, Verily I say unto you, except ye be converted mm -hmm. and become as little children, mm -hmm. ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Mm -hmm. Whosoever therefore shall humble himself yep. as this little child, yep. the same is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Mm -hmm. And whoso shall receive one such little child in my name, receiving me. That's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah, so you know, the, you know, the elder is getting into uh, changing your mindset and, yep. and the, the, the type of mind frame you got to be in to be in this truth, and ultimately it's humility. This is uh, First Peter chapter two verse one. Mm -hmm. It says, "Wherefore laying aside all malice and all guile mm -hmm. and hypocrisies mm -hmm. and envies mm -hmm. and all evil speaking, yep. as newborn babes yep. desi desire the sincere milk." Mm -hmm. Of the word that you may grow thereby. Yeah, that's it. That's it. So the, the scriptures are, are repetitive in that way. Yep. Where you know we, we are to have the mindset of new children because what are children? Children are are malleable, impressionable, right? And so that's the the mindset you need to have uh, an open mind, willing to learn from from the men that that have taught us. You know, and it, it, it's a show of humility, right? So that's what the Heavenly Father is looking for, a contrite man, you know, one, one who has uh, put aside his own fleshly desires for the furtherance of the truth, you know. I got one for you, though. Uh, this is uh, Philippians chapter 2, 
And uh, I start at five. Mm -hmm. It says, "Listen." It says, "Let this mind be in you, which was also in Yahweh Shah right. So the, the ultimate, the ultimate symbol of, of humility is one who was innocent but didn't resist getting up on that cross. Mm -hmm. Right. That's the ultimate show of humility. Why? Because he was one. He was innocent. But then two, he did it without his own will in mind, but the will of the Heavenly Father. Right. That's the ultimate show of humility, right? So that's the type of, uh, of man you should be in this truth. One who's willing to do away with his own fleshly desires for the furtherance of the truth. You won't, you won't, you, you, you'll learn contentment in that way. Not trying to be the, the boss man or take down the boss man or mm -hmm. whoever the ruler is trying to take them down. That that won't happen if you if you carry yourself at a certain level of humility. If it ain't about you. Right. It's about the furtherance right. of the truth. Right. 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 Uh, uh, go back to verse. Yeah. No worries. Uh, verse six. It says. It says, "Who being in the form of God, mm -hmm. thought it not robbery to be equal with the Most High." Yeah. It says, but made himself of no reputation right. and took upon him the form of a servant yep. and was made in the likeness of men yep. and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. That's right. He became, uh, became obedient uh, to death, right? And that's the mindset we should have. It ain't about us. It's about the Lord Yahweh Shah yep. and us ushering in his kingdom. Get out of here, Satan. I rebuke thee. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, stay focused. Yeah, stay focused. I got some. Uh, uh, Philippians 4 and 11 Not that I speak in respect of one For I have learned In whatsoever state I'm in uh, I am Therewith to be content I know both how to I know both how to be a base and, and I know how to abound Everywhere And in all things I am instructed Both to be full and to be hungry Both to up to abound and to suffer need. I could do all things through Yahweh Shah Mashiach, which strengthens me. That's it, man. That's it. Can we get one more? Mm -hmm. um, Zechariah 9 and 12. What we can get it. You got it? Yeah, it's beautiful. I got it. Uh, this is uh, Zechariah 9 and 12. It says, Turn you to the stronghold, ye prisoners of hope, mm -hmm. even to today. Do I declare that I will render double unto thee? Right, and, and, and for some reason, Romans 8 and 18 keeps coming back into my mind. You know, the sufferings of this present time. In this present time, we are we are known as prisoners. We are known as prisoners of hope. So therefore, we are we have been. I said to the elder earlier, we have been obligated to to conform to the to the laws of the Lord. The ways and styles of the Lord. For example, when you when you got a man in prison, he has to conform to the ways of the warden. The warden sets the rule, you gotta follow it. Likewise, being prisons of the Lord, being prisons of hope, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai set the rule, we gotta follow it. You see? So this is what this is this is all, man. Being prisons of hope, hoping and praying that the Lord have mercy on us, doing as commanded. Going out here prophesying, did not Yahweh Shai say he was, the, he, was the, he was the spirit of prophecy? And this is what we need to be doing. All men out there, we got to be prophesying about the downfall of this kingdom. This is what we're prophesying about. And all the wars and the skirmishes and of the evils and of the pestilence that is on the horizon. We ain't out here to sit here and try to, you know, rock you to sleep and, and just to tell you one, one side, man. Is the Lord merciful? Yes, he is. Is he full of compassion? Yes, he is. But right now, is that the time frame that the Lord's living in and that we're living in? Absolutely not, man. The Lord's gonna give all that at the appropriate time. He's gonna render unto us all the, the, the beautiful things that he promised unto us. We're gonna receive those things. But as the, but as but as Judas Maccabee said, there's still a battle before us. Be not greedy of the spoil. So just because you got a little something in this kingdom, that don't mean shit, man. We still got a lot of hell to go through. We still gotta go through that. We're going through that straight gate, man. There's fire on one side, water on the other. We 
hoping and praying that the Lord keep us safe from all of it. All right. All right. You got something? You got something? Something real quick. Yeah. Uh, this is uh, First Peter, uh, chapter four, verse one. It says, "For as much then as uh, how much y'all can suffer for us in the flesh, right. arm yourself likewise with the same mind." Right. And for he that has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin. He that has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin. Even like the Lord, man, when the Lord was on the scene, everybody accused him. Pontius said, he said, you know, what has this man done? You know, that's your law, you see to it. I don't, I don't really fault this man. But because Israel was all adamant that he was, he was, he was a, a blasphemer, you know, he was making himself equal with the, with the Most High, they didn't like that shit. But again, those very same spirits are on the earth today, man. It don't, it, it, it's, it, it's all simple, man. It's all simple. The very same spirits are right back here today, doing the same shit that they was doing back then. Everybody's in their lot, man. Everybody's in their lot. You got something now? Come on, go ahead. Uh, Ecclesiasticus 39 and 1. But he that giveth his mind to the law of the Most High yep. and is occupied in the meditation thereof right. will seek out the wisdom of all the ancient right. and be occupied in prophecies. Right. I mean, it's a beautiful time to be occupied in prophecy. It's a very beautiful time. Because it gives you joy when you read something, something that you read maybe four years ago. Now all of a sudden it's starting to surface. It's starting to happen. That's, that, that boosts your spirit up. That boosts your spirit. And, that, and now you thought, y'all watch me all shy. This is going down. This is happening. You see? Because we're occupied in the prophecies that were set before us. This is the only thing that you should be occupied in. You know what I'm saying? You know, you got these, these, I should say, you have these um, distractions that are taking place all throughout the world and throughout this country, throughout your city. You got these distractions. You can you can pay attention to the distractions because it's what you said, be not ignorant in any matter, small or great. You pay attention because by being a servant of the Lord and being a man, and being a man of the Lord, you're going to be able to give an answer for anything that somebody asks you about. Hey, what about this? Yeah, you know, you got a little bit of knowledge on that. Yeah, I can, I can, yeah, this, that, third, you know. But again, knowing the knowing the primary goal is, is being focused in these prophecies, being focused in the word of Yahweh, Bosh, Shai. Go ahead. Just to land back, uh, 1 John 2 and 20, but ye have an unction from the Holy One, and ye know all things. That's right, we have an unction from the Holy One, and we know all things. And that's what, I, I'll say this, man, I don't know if y'all brothers were around, but there used to be a, a brother named Brother Amashabah Allah, the man of Jacob, the Dallas brothers. And um, him and Elder Yasha Wamba, I think it was Elder Yasha Wamba, they were in a park. And when they went to that park, you know, this is years ago, years ago, they went to the park and they started firing different questions. And that brother was getting down. Boom, 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 boom. He was getting down. And I always thought about that, you know? And he's long gone now. But, Sentiment. The sentiment is there, you know, having that unction to have yeah. a little bit of understanding of everything. See, and that way it makes you a complete man. You know, it makes you it makes you complete. You know, go ahead, brother. This is Luke twenty one and uh, thirty three. It says, "Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away." That's right. And take heed to yourself. He said, "Any times your heart be overcharged with suffering." And drunkenness, mm -hmm. the cares of this life. Right, and the, and, the, and the cares of this life will swallow you up, man. It will swallow you up. Going back into the world and doing all those things that you refrained from doing, now you're going back to doing them. This world, this, this world will swallow you up, man, and, and, and spit you out. Go ahead. It says, and so that day come upon you unaware. Mm -hmm. For as a snare, it shall come upon all them that dwell on the whole face of the whole earth. That's right. Watch ye therefore and pray always. Yep. That ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass, right. and to stand before the Son of Man. Right, that ye may be counted worthy. That you may be counted worthy. All right, and again, you gotta stand fast, man. You gotta hold fast. You know, there's all types of shit out there, all types of temptations. Satan don't sleep. When 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 the Lord asked Satan where he, you know where he been, he said, "Up oh, walking to and fro in the earth." So the Lord would definitely, you know, say, go check that, go test my man down here. Go check. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> came down, came out of hell. Right, right, came out of hell. Sizzling, sizzling. Steam on the floor. Steam. Hot lava. Talking about, talking about, touch me. 
<laughs> but anyway, yeah. But um, be mindful, man. Be mindful of, of the works of, of that you that the works that you perform and how you carry yourself. You know, Cain. The Lord said, Cain, if thou doest well, thou should be accepted. So be mindful. Just do well, man. Pray, in the, pray through the Spirit and power of Yahweh and Yahweh Shai that He gives you more understanding, He opens you up, and He lets you receive, and that He keeps you from going down any demonic path, man. All right? You got one more? Anybody got something? Glad you got something? Oh, no. You got one more else? No. Uh, um, hey, hey, like the prayer says in, um, in Matthew, mm -hmm. but the Lord, uh, pray to the Lord that He don't lead us into temptation. temptation. Huh? Right, right. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. All right? And again, Lord, the Lord knows who is on us. Lord willing, we, we make we hold fashion and we make that, you know, make that be known through the Spirit of the Lord that, hey, we trying, man. We holding fast and we trying. Go ahead, brother. It's the book of Revelation 3 and 10. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the earth. It's like the world mm -hmm. try them that dwell upon the earth. You know, you know how big that is right there? You know how big that is? The Lord said he's going to keep you from the hour of temptation, which we understand in order to be the hour when the, the time when they're going to start giving that MOTB out, man. That when, that when that comes out, man, you know how big that is? Because it, it's going to put you in a position where you're going to be faced to, you're going to come to the crossroads, right? Right now, it don't seem like shit. It don't seem like much because we can come and go as we please. restaurant you know go in there pull out the debit card get a meal sit down chop it up we can do all those things but when that shit comes to an abrupt halt and now you're gonna be like damn you're getting kind of hungry i don't have the, the the message the means to go get food may the lord keep you from the hour of temptation that's gonna come to all the world so pray that the lord gives you that man pray that the lord keeps you in his in his sights that it's gonna keep you from that time period man Go ahead. Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which right. thou hast, that no man take thy crown. That's right. Behold, the Lord come quickly. And he's coming, man. Things are speeding up. Times are changing. Things are changing. People are doing, you know, doing exactly what the scripture said they was going to do. Nations are gearing up. Kings are rearing up. Our allies are getting together. All right? This is happening, man. And it's again, we say it, we're going to continue to say it. This is a beautiful time to be living, man, to be alive. Oh, uh, uh, you got something else, brother? Yeah, go ahead. Especially in a time like you're saying, because scripture said that uh, suddenly the soul places come on soon. They'll be your soul. Uh, this is uh, 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 9, mm -hmm. and it reads, And the Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptation right. and, 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 and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. That's right. So he's going to deliver the, deliver the godly out of the day of temptation. And the unjust, you're gonna let them be punished, man. You know? So know who you're dealing with, man. Know who your surroundings are. You know, keep your keep yourself in good company with the men whom the Lord has selected. Right? There's no other group out there that can truly say that the Lord has selected these men. You gotta you gotta ask yourself, right? In the whole scheme of things, the Lord delivered his his word down to men. Right? He chose a group of men. Now, if you look out there and you look at the, at, the, at the dynamics of all these groups that have been around for a few right. years with the head men, look at the track record. Look right. what they're teaching. Look what they're saying. Who, who, who you got to go with? You know? Kara said, you got to go with the name you can simply trust. And that's Great Millstone, man. That's right. That's Great Millstone. Go ahead. This is uh, Micah 3 and 18. It says, then shall you return and discern between the righteous and the wicked between him that serveth the Most High and him that serveth him not. That's right. Him that serveth the Most High, him that serveth him not. So therefore, many men think they're going to, you know, call upon a name or deliver the name. But the Lord's not dealing with it, man. All right? You got something else? Yeah. Huh. Uh, this is Ezekiel 33 and 33. It says, And when this come to pass, and lo, it will come, then shall they know that a prophet had been among them. Right. And we're going to end it with this. When these things that come to pass, lo, they will come. Then shall they know that a prophet had been among them. And again, we ain't looking for any kind of glory or no praises. We just looking that we please your how about me, how shy, and that we as humble servants be found worthy to be delivered, man. That's all, man. 
and let the Lord's will be done, as that brother Rahim used to say. He don't care about none. He don't care if I make it on this side. I just want the Lord, the will of the Lord to be done. Lord, That's Lord. all we care about. That's right. right. So with that, Lord willing, everybody was edified. You know, prophecies, scriptures, testimony. We give it all. Every week we come out, and may we please y'all, watch me all shy that we may be found worthy in that time. So with that, we'll give all praise to Yahweh, Bashim, Yahweh, Shai, Bashim, Kakudash. We'll see you brothers on the other side. We'll say Shalom. Shalom. Shalom.